Well, 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 look who we have here. If it's not Mr. MG the Future, you know what I'm about. Thank you guys for joining me on my channel today on this lovely Tuesday, April the 2nd. <laughs> no fools around here. 2024. Today's video will be a 3 a.m. featuring yours truly. I will be driving straight through the survival scrolls trying to figure out what in the world's going on with our planet, our world, and our social order. Her influence of Saturn, the eclipse, and many more. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know if I'm going to do all that. I ain't going to hold you. But thank you for joining me on my channel. Be sure to smash the like button on the way in. Shout out to all the subscribers. Make sure that bell notification icon is clicked, unclicked. You know how they do. If you're new around here, appreciate a comment, especially in my replay game. Got to run VPs anyway. Yeah, but we'll jump into it. We want to piggyback off of the solar eclipse chatter and see what I can dig up, perhaps. Should be a good time. 3M style, MG the Future. Hold on tight. We'll be playing a track from um, Art of the Remix by MG the Future, but let's do that uh, under influence Trapanese mix. Be right back. still crazy i don't even know why i did that like that but it was fun and that's all that matters in the end it's not about the destination but all the friends you meet and make all along the way it's your boy into the future thank you guys for joining me on my channel today on this lovely what the april 2nd <laughs> i kind of skipped the april fool's day stream I don't know what the most ridiculous news or jokes were yesterday, honestly. A lot of the headlines were tight goofy. And then the biggest trope, I suppose, is that you're seeing mainstream people saying life is so ridiculous for to them now. <laughs> Imagine that. That it's hard to tell the difference between real life and April Fool's jokes. This is normies I've seen say this. And I was just like, wow. You know, how long has it taken for us to at least all arrive at the same conclusion that life is utterly ridiculous? And I don't even know how it's working anymore. Like, let's be honest. I don't think I ever did. But the model that I was working with prior at least seemed a little bit more stable. 
the pieces seemed to connect a little bit better. We had a hierarchy of needs, had people in positions, power or knowledge and understanding. And, you know, every cog grease the other cog paws and everything just keeps spinning and moving, right? Even if you got some reprobate stuff, that's the minority. And then, you know, the white hats, the good guys, the Christians. <laughs> They're out there somewhere making sure, you know, everyone's keeping the law and all the commandments. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like everything until, uh, you know, a determined end, according to the most high, you know, words to the rabbis and priests who had the heads up. And, you know, you know, I used to think like that, you know, for life. I used to think what I mean is like there's some side of sort of uh guidelines <laughs> like there's some sort of a moral political guideline like these people who had an agenda and were capable of finding other capable people to create follow execute an agenda that's competent though you know what i'm saying you know from just our upbringing with stories fantasy movies and stuff we always had like a polarity issue i know there's good guys versus bad guys or the hero's journey you know Humble, meek people discover their hidden powers and, you know, overcome adversity. That's usually the themes taught to us, you know, through our media. Uh, or used to be, I should say. You know, I'm an old head, I guess now. But I kind of bought into that because of that, too. You know, no one no one stepped up and corrected it ever. No one, like, tapped me on the shoulder and was like, nah, all this shit cap for real. Don't even get caught up. <laughs> Except for maybe, like, someone's great-grandmother. They knew for you not to watch that TV. But they never explained it, you know? But I think they knew. I think they knew they was using it to cap the hardest. And now that some of that cap is getting undone, you kind of find yourself in a new world almost. But not because necessarily the environment or the universe or something like that changed, but because your awareness changed. And I kind of feel like I've had an awareness change or an adjustment, I should say. And I was just thinking about it like in a more practical 3D way. Kind of arrived me. I wanted to talk about this, whatever this is. I haven't even decided. But I had a high nigga thought the other day, right? I'm sitting here. It's supposed to be me. And I was thinking about how much of your life, like, you encode into your brain, like, as a memory or reference point. And I tend to do that a lot. Like, I can reveal a lot of my life or past or uh, previous scenarios. It's kind of faint, though. But when I do that, and I think about how I experienced it and what, what was where and all that, sometimes I think about, what about all this stuff in those moments I missed? You know, like, because, like, humans, like, with our eyes and stuff, we only really have, what do they say this is? Don't get me the line. But you only get like this, you know, for whatever some reason, I want to say 270 degrees, but I know that's wrong. That's a way more obtuse angle. Did I get it? I know. Yeah, you thought I forgot. You thought I didn't go to school. Nah, I know 270 should be way more obtuse than this. But whatever that view is, right? That's at least more than 90 degrees. You know, your field of vision. So even when you're in a moment with somebody or you're somewhere, you're only taking in what's in front of you. You, you have no idea what the people or the environment or anything behind you is doing. Like, think of how much you've missed because you can't see all around you at once. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the same environment you missed it. Perfect example that kind of like get, brought me hip to this like limitation was like when I went, went to high school graduation, right? I saw two girls at the same time, though, then this was a freaky shit. Like, because my name was like Mad Leap in the list. These other girls, these two girls, they had like last names that are like at the end, too. So it was only a few of us left in the backstage or whatever. So I saw these two girls and they're graduating and they got the colors on and everything just like me. And I'm like, I've never seen you niggas a day in my life. <laughs> I never seen them until we graduated. I'm talking about not when we started. I'm not talking about an orientation. I'm talking about never once at lunch. I'm talking about never, ever once at the bus pool or whatever. Like, I've never seen these characters before. But on the last day of everything, two new characters that went to my school the whole time. 
and, and it kind of messed with me a little bit because it was like, I thought I recorded everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm keeping game. But it's quite possible that certain things and certain people are there in your life, but you don't ever see them. You know what I'm saying? It could have been one of them situations where I was just walking a little bit too fast. And because I walked too fast every morning, they saw me, but I didn't see them. You know what I'm talking about? It could be crazy as that, too. I didn't ask. I had enough anxiety having to go on stage and stuff. But um, it was mind-altering. And then I think one of my people was saying, like, yo, and this girl came up to us and asked if we knew you were related to you. And she was saying, like, how much of a good friend you were and how you and her mom got along. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Who is this woman, Harpo? And no, you know, no one know no names. It's like mad people and shit, but you didn't even ask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and how come all these people disappear when they start talking to you when I'm popping up? But like I heard, like even that, it made it even more weird because I was getting stories like that. Like people walked up to him and was like, kids talking about they knew me. And I was like, that ain't that ain't true. <laughs> That's not based on a true story. Same same time period too. The other thing that was weird about like these universes and these timelines. It was like the poor little white girl that transferred to my school, uh, 10th grade, I think. Yeah, it was 10th grade. And it was like the first week or first month or something, but she didn't start in ninth grade. That's the point of the story. So she transfers to my school in 10th grade. And she sees me sitting outside waiting for the bus. And it's like a little white girl, like, I'm talking about like a hundred percent white girl. I'm not talking about like, fist fighting on Twitter, white girl. I'm talking about like Raleigh, North Carolina, white girl. And she walks up to me and she says something to me. She called me something. I was like, it wasn't Daquan, but it was something, you know. She's like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> got a do-rag on her earrings and shit. I probably got like a fake throwback jersey on or something. Just white girl talking about, hey, how am I doing? Like, Because <laughs> I had no idea who she was. She walked up to me and started talking. And she was smiling. That's what threw me off, right? You've been there before. Don't act like that. And I'm like, she's smiling in my face. Right? What's going on? Why she act like she know me? And she's talking. And she's talking. And she's like, you remember back when we, um, she was telling me, me and her were best friends since middle school. And I told her right away, I'm like, nah, I didn't even want to play along with her because it was weird to me because, you know, I was already sensitive, you know what I'm talking about, to like other shit. So I was like, I didn't even want to play that game. I'm like, nah, I assure you, I've never seen you a day in my life. She's like, stop playing. Like, she's basically like, like stop playing, Jerome. I'm like, nah, first of all, that's not my name. I think we had school IDs and I had my shit on my uh, keys. So I, I showed her my name and my picture, right? And then she was talking about whatever the middle school it was. It's like, I didn't go to that middle school for real, like real talk. And I had some other people with me. Um, and they're just bugged out because it's a white girl like that walking up to me like we were best friends. And I was like, that was mad weird and uncomfortable. But first of all, who's this nigga that looks just like me? I haven't, I haven't seen him in my whole life in that city. But um, you should have seen how uh, devastated she was, right? Because on some real shit, she didn't believe me. So she was bitter for a little while. Like when I see her in passing, she was kind of like to go so to go so dramatic from happy best friend energy to her best friend trying to play in her face and act like he don't know her around the new school, the new people type vibe. Like that's how she was giving it up. And I was like, mm -mm, I really don't know you. And, and even if in the worst case scenarios, I had some type of memory lapse, you know, some selective amnesia. Too many other variables didn't line up. Because how come you weren't here in ninth grade if you're my best friend? If you're my best friend, what do you mean? You just found out I was here? My best friend just found out I was here a whole 10th grade later? Come on now. Don't even sound like best friends. Don't, don't even make no sense. You would have you called me on the phone a day or two ago talking about you switching to my school because we're best friends for it. You know what I'm talking about? So like... That shit never, that shit always like stuck with me because it bothered me because I seen her a little bit longer and then eventually got stopped seeing her. She didn't, she didn't finish school with us. But I say all that to say. Um, 
th- there's a quality to this reality that's not quite as advertised. Because I don't think that's the only time I've been in a situation that that's kind of creepy like that, where people in an environment swear they've seen you before, or you know, people act like they know you. I, man, I, I had a um. Someone throw some salt in my game when I was like, when I had my little girlfriend in high school off, off of some shit like that, like off of the mistaken identity, I guess you call it. Now, you mind you, this is like before cell phones and camera phones was rocking. I'm talking 2003, four or five, like boondocks and Dave Chappelle show type shit. And um, one of my ex's brother was locked up in jail. And in jail, he had a friend who was a white crip and the white crip had a sister and the sister sent him pictures of her friends and stuff, you know, with the old school, you know, little uh, plastic cameras you could take and then you take the Eckert and they print it out like that type of shit. And allegedly this white boy who's a crip sister sent him pictures of me and her partying and hanging out together. And then that got to my ex's boyfriend, I mean, my, my ex's boyfriend, my ex's brother, who's in jail with him, seeing the picture. Now, mind you, he's never met me before. He's, he was locked up as soon as I met her. So he never shook my hand or looked me in the eyes. And he's telling her over the phone, like, yo, I think your man is whoop, 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 or something, something with this white girl. Whoop, whoop. I'm like, whoop. what in the, um, what's that TV show called? What in the, what is it? Not Southern Pines. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. What the fuck y'all talking about for real? <laughs> Y'all got me fucked up like on three different days of the week. Like, first of all, there's a white man, mysterious, these mysterious white girls that I never dated, but there's a mysterious white girl whose brother's a crip. Flag on the plate. That don't even make sense. I live in Raleigh. Let's cut it. Let's calm it the fuck down. And then two, you're sure it's me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Nigga, you don't know me. <laughs> like, what is the context in which was like, aha, uh-huh, I think that's him. That's gotta be him because of A, B, C, and like it didn't even make sense because it wasn't based on true story. But even even in those type of awkward moments where where you the person going through it, until that hits you, you know what I'm saying? Until it's on your desk, you probably never even think about like how ridiculous that is. Especially when people don't believe you. Like, you hear what I'm saying? Like, people were, like, acting like that was real is what I'm saying. Like, it inconvenienced me emotionally. You know what I'm talking about? And it was, like, over nothing. Like, over fiction. And and it makes you really start thinking for real, man. Like, uh, how much of our life is influenced or nudged that way by, by events and characters that are not quite real. It's life changing. It really is. Like all those little moments I kind of share with you. The only reason why I remember them because I know they shifted something in me. Like me having to adjust to like like how crazy people are. Like because you know it's crazy when you when you're the one that knows like nah that's not anything. None of that happened. And everyone around you is kind of like gang ganging up on you on that matter. You're like, let's get fucking serious here. What are you supposed to do in those moments in life? Right. When, when you're oriented or you're in alignment with yourself or with the truth of whatever you're going through, and then your environment or the characters in your environment kind of reflect to you something that's false. Like, I don't think people really, like, talk about that. Like, you know, help you, <laughs> you know, I don't know the, uh, the psychiatry uh, terminology and programs they have implemented for such shenanigans. But, but I take it that most people thug it out. Like, I think most people just say, it is what it is. Like, I think that's where that attitude comes from. Like, it is what it is. Like, I'm not beat for that, for real. I'm not even going to explain myself because you know it's childish. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that energy. And think about, like, how much I've dealt with that. I've dealt with that more than I bargained for, you know? And um, it feels like it's a side effect. It almost feels like uh, like if I zoom out of myself, you know, but then I started to like try to see things from different perspectives as they're going on. Like, you know, there's this whole quadrant of life I, I, I live next to, but I did not 
participate in or I was not actively aware of. If you should, you know what I'm saying? You never had 360 degrees of awareness of all the moments. And you just really start thinking about how much in this timeline or life you have missed just by does it just by the design of the nature of our awareness you know what i'm saying not because you're an error but because you're going to miss so much and um in the bigger picture with everybody i feel like our society maybe has has had a lot of weird stuff in the blind spots but right now this year for whatever reason leading into this eclipse allegedly supposedly right that this is also like Basically, what I'm saying is like all of it is a side effect of planetary phenomenon, meaning the way it manifested in your life over the last couple of years had to have like, you know, what I'm saying it's that energy created it that way on purpose to get you to this point. Right. Basically, it's like you couldn't avoid it. Like, I think the reason why it's so ridiculous and childish is because it's forced. Like, uh, like if someone changed, I'm trying to think of a better uh, system or metaphor I can use here so I can explain it to you. Like, um, a glitch in a matrix, really. It's like those shenanigan moments seem like a glitch in a matrix, but they're a glitch in a matrix because something shifted. So now you need this piece of the storyline to connect you to the new timeline. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. It seems extreme, but I assure you, I've, I've lived through too many of them and coming out of them. Where every now, what I'm, my point, bigger point is collectively, people are now starting to recognize this blind spot and <laughs> the sheer shenanigans of United States politics and uh, media and everything that's going on on a social level. You start to see like we swept everything into the corner or we, we swept a whole bunch of shit under the bed. And now the only area left untouched or room left unopened is the room that we're all finally stumbling into. Maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, it'll be a couple of weirdos like me trying to peek through the door and telling you niggas like, look, there's light coming out of that door. I got it cracked a little bit. I can see some stuff in here and shit ain't quite, you know, what they said it was. And people are like, bro, why are you worrying about that door? Close that door, leave it alone. And then other people, if you can catch them in the hallway, you're like, oh, you see, you see, you saw something moving there. And they're like, oh, yeah, I heard about that. That's the government. You're like, oh, the government's hidden in this room, right? And then you you just watch that type of thing play out over the past couple of decades. Now the door is wide open, right? And everybody's done with what, you know, whatever had been preoccupied prior. And now everyone's looking in this room and they're like, whoa, <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, oh, shit. That's where all those sounds were coming from. Basically, like we got trolled or. Uh, yeah, controlled, like. um, Funneled. Ha, that's funny. A couple of years ago, they brought the click funnels back. But yeah, it seems like all of our attention has been funneled. And now we're kind of looking at this possibility that life, not not just how, like, how ridiculous and how it's all going to work out, but like. If you haven't picked up on it by now, that life, the life experience itself makes very uh, abrasive adjustments. And we keep thinking it's an Illuminati or them, they, queen, president. Like, you know, I'm talking about we're, we're domesticated into the notion of a powerful hierarchy. But, but I do not think that's in these bodies. I think. What I'm trying to say is, like, if they make the metaphor that this is a movie or something, it kind of feels like sometimes someone's hitting the pause button and they make the adjustments to the tape. And when they resume and we kick back in and we we finish playing out the movie, certain shit is different. It's like, oh, shit, my car is red. <laughs> and like right now, your, your, your car is yellow. You know what I'm talking about? Your car has been yellow, right? Like, and, it, and it's real trippy and shit. Um... But because your instinct is what, when that happens, when any of these, it's like I'm using more extreme examples, but on a small scale, when any of these happens, like what is your go-to, right? Your go-to is to ask somebody in proximity that you know, like, yo, you remember that A, B, and C was A, B, and C, right? That's your first line of defense. If most people, like your friends, your cousins, your significant others, be like, yeah, then, you know, there's no sweat. But when they say no, then what you got to do? Then you got to Google it, right? Now you got to get your phone. Hope your phone don't lie to you. 
And, and, and then you go like, nah, I got to dig deeper in the crates. I don't care what none of these niggas talk about. Let me ask the people from back then. You know, your, the people who you feel like were or are in your alignment, in your energy, right? You, you, you notice like you have to do that. Like cognitive dissonance be damned. You have to go through your verifications for everything in this reality. And I think for the first time in life, uh, this is now a majority concern. And I can't tell you if it's because of the eclipse, but I can definitely assure you, based on how they're talking about it, this seems to all be culminating to the eclipse. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been funneled to this narrative. There we go. Boom. By default. I'm not even watching the Netflix propaganda, you know, with uh, what Obama put out or the three bodies and stuff. I'm not even going to touch that for real. Like, I'm not even going to do that to myself because I'm like, They're orchestrating it, nudging it, predictive programming it, and, and whatever that is, right? Let's let's imagine that's a thing. <laughs> Historically, it seems like it's been a thing. But whatever these people are nudging us into, I, I have to remind everybody, at a time like this, in a dimension like this, where everything's silly and kind of goofy, it it's not going to stick or connect. You know what I'm talking about? So it's like almost like a... a Hold on. I need better metaphors for this because it's fucking. I'm almost there. I almost got it. Almost. Almost got it, man. Hold on. This, this, these some silly motherfuckers. If that's the case, and I'll, and I'll explain. Got it. <laughs> so imagine like the way they this has been. Uh given to us, like the they, the shadows, has been like society is a fire, right? And for some reason, they want to put our fire out. However, the type of fire we are is immune to water, right? It's it's not a fire that goes out with water. You need like sand, dirt, you need something else to stifle, pause the flames. But the they, they're from the universe where the type of fire it is can be extinguished with water. So they create all of these plans on how to manipulate rivers, bridges, rain, weather. And it's because they're trying to control enough water to extinguish the flame, right? But something happened. I don't know. After 9-11, 2012, but something happened where the, the quality of our fire changed. And that could be, side, you know, hashtag coalesce to the sun's phase changing. Uh-oh, there's a there there. But something changed. And now the plan and the agenda that needed water doesn't work no more. And I kind of feel like there's enough people um, with think pieces on the internet that's been analyzed and videos like this, I'm sure have been analyzed for them to know like, whoa, maybe everyone, these people are actually right. Like this stuff hasn't been sticking. Let's, let's look at what, let's, let's look at their points of contention. It's like, yeah, I don't think our agenda is working here. But instead of that type of thing happening, which you would assume in a normal society would happen, it hasn't. So what they have done is push all the buttons to drop all the water. Anyway, blue beam, we're going to hit it. All these, they're going to hit all the buttons that don't work anyway. And, and, and then once the flame is stoked with all this water and we look around like, yo, why did they just dump all this water on this? And you're still burning. You haven't accomplished your goal. You wasted time. You wasted energy. And now, whoever you are, they, now I know you're not as strong or in control as you, as the Lord created it because you're using the wrong form or mode of attack. You're just swinging. There we go. You're just swinging and you're not connecting. You're missing. So you're swinging and you're missing. But you're supposed to be the big scary they that orchestrated the distraction of putting water on an incurable flame. Like, I don't, that don't make sense to me. Now, if I was just pontificating based on the banter of us doing what we do on 3 a.m., people could tell me there's another way to look at it. You know, two things can be true. And they can play all those games with me. And I like playing them too. 
But these days, it don't even matter what I'm talking about because everybody else is already talking about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like anything I'm about to say, like very regular people are going to say at least one of these things. And then if you watch and get suggested enough of it, you put it all together. It's going to be everything that I said. So it's not even, it's not me. It is what it is. This is what's going on. And I think I'm just grasping at Strong's trying to add a narrative or, or a description to it, really. Because I've never been through this before. You know what I'm talking about? Like, as much as it may seem that I have a grasp on things because I'm able to call it early, in a lot of ways, the more accurate I've been or the more sure I've been that I'm doing that, the more stranger or how do I say? It huh. don't know how to put it in words. I first first things first it's scary. You know, it's scary. It, it's scary to be right about so much stupid shit. <laughs> It's scary, right? And I'm not a scary person normally. I got a healthy dose of paranoia, but I'm not really scared. But it's scary. Um, it's like um yeah, it's like living a nightmare, actually. It's scary like that. It's it's scary like a nightmare, like all this nightmarish conspiracy talk, all these nightmarish dreams and all this nightmarish context from, you know, occult books or whether you're jumping into Crowley by accident or you're starting to understand what some of these ritualistic people have been doing for seemingly, they tell you, hundreds of years, you know, it's scary like that. And then for you to pontificate about that because you're not part of it or, you know, we're on the outside looking in trying to understand it. And as soon as you start to recognize a theme or pattern in your actual real life to where you can actually blend what you read and heard and then recognize it in reality, like once that starts to happen to you, um, It's that Roddy Rich, that Roddy, 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 Roddy Piper movie, They Live. It's that for real. It's like, yo, I can see the patterns now. This is a thing. Like, this, these motherfuckers right here, boy, this is some reprobate shit I can prove it to you. Watch. And you try to put niggas, you know, for decades now, I've been trying to make niggas put the glasses on with me. Like, yo, peep game right there. Like, check this shit out. And niggas be like, ah. <laughs> niggas will fight you. Niggas will fight you to shut you up for real. You know what I'm talking about? Like people get really spirited with you for trying to force them to wake up. The asshole in me then really didn't give a fuck for real. But now that it's hit a certain peak for me, I can, I can, um, now I can better imagine what that's like. Like getting hit with these nightmarish things that are true when just the other day you were just happy to be registered to vote. <laughs> you get active in your local elections. And here's this crazy nigga trying to tell you, like, time is cap. We got some alien overlords. There's some shape shifting craft. And oh, yeah, by the way, fuck your mother. You don't even know where these niggas come from for real. And my grandma said I'm Indian because we are. Like, but by the time you hit somebody in the head who was just like finished watching SpongeBob in high school, they went from SpongeBob, like, really think about it, like on an empathy level, they went from SpongeBob SquarePants and Mike Jones. Like, don't let's not forget how retarded some of this shit was we went through. So we had SpongeBob. Now, don't miss the dancing sponge. SpongeBob, sus ass. Mike Jones. <laughs> These people, you feel me? And I'm here trying to tell them, you know, about the clip off <laughs> and the Kabbalah. Like, what type of asshole am I for real? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that, I guess that's wisdom. I guess hashtag growth. And uh, 
Yeah, that's what's scary about it. It's like, uh, we're here now. We're really here. We're, we're really in that place that people like us have sensed was coming all along. Hmm. Shout out to the chat, though. <laughs> First in the chat today was Brother Divine. Peace to you. The Brother LeVar Bennett from Canada. Canaan Land, I see you. Composure Slim. Whoa. Noodles is in the building. Yerp. Average Joe Beats. What up, tribe? Peace to MG. Peace to you, brother. Leonard Lassiter Bay. Greetings, Royals. Salute. Salam. Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. What's up, everyone? Current said, hey, notifications working. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out to notifications. Shout out to Current, by the way. My name, Ken Show. He says, howdy ho. Jalert, the producer. Ayo, hey, catching this live, live for once in a while. Peace, game. Peace out to Jalert. Jalet. I want to say, I, that ERT sound like A, like a French. Like I want to call you Jalet, <laughs> but it's Jalert, right? Like Gerald Levert, like you're Gerald Levert, but like, you know what I'm talking about? That's some tenant shit. They just cut off certain letters and be like, he's, and it's like, it's like, his name is Levert, but we call him Gerald Levert for short. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> NJ Cooper's in the building. Did y'all like that stream yet before the data dump? Yeah, man. Did you hit like on this, on this trifling video, please? Por favor. It, you know, what kind of man would I be? If I couldn't get a like from you, from me, you know what I'm talking about? So, like, just drop a like real quick, and we can get that out the way. That's usually the most awkward part of the whole stream, like having to pander and beg people to interact with your content so that your content means something. But it is what it is. I've been blessed and lucky as a small content creator. <laughs> it's crazy that I'm a small content creator, but I'm happy that I am in that way. Like, because... I never had to chase numbers like uh, I don't have to chase any particular modality or subject or um, I'm not obligated. <laughs> you know, some of the brothers who are in bigger platforms seem to be obligated to a certain brand or theme or energy. And I'm just too ADD for all that shit, for real, honestly. It's not that I couldn't do it. It's just like my brain ain't set up for. I got to be raw. I got to be uncontrollable. I got to change my mind. I got to be able to be wrong sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I got to set these different contrast points to understand how far along I am. But yeah, I've been lucky though, I should say. You know, with all the people that support and share it, the cash apps I get, I'm more than thankful for. Appreciate all y'all this week. And then I have the producer community that's always helped me down on the shop on mgfuture.com. So I've been very blessed and fortunate that that has worked for me up until this point. And um, going through that adventure, too, like that's another thing that's happened to me, too, because I'm, uh, I'm in my two year. So I'm on a new Saturn cycle on a new nine cycle, I guess you call it. Uh, sure thing. Sure thing. I think it was Miss Queenie. Shout out to the brother Malachi. Malachi put me onto a California psychic called Miss Queenie. And she was putting me on to numerology a couple of years ago, actually. She said a whole bunch of things at the time. It was really uh, absurd, but absurd in a sense that I didn't see that for myself. And I just kind of laughed it off. Like, ha ha, I don't think so. Hey, Paul. Crushes. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, every time I do something, this screen turn off. I don't even like that. Like, they're not even so do I couldn't do that on purpose. Oh man, how did I lose that whole thought? I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Go back. Hold on. I read something that sent me there. It's alert. Data dump. Likes. Support. Small channel. Lucky. Bless. Hashtag goals. Yeah. Moral of the story. I appreciate you guys for still watching these videos. Um, but but it hit different. Oh yeah, my. Miss Queenie, numerology, Saturn, and all that shit. I get to look back on the previous cycle of nine years, and that shit went in a blur, 
I'm not even I'm not even gonna hold you. Like that shit was like peak life at, at how fast it went in contrast to other points in my life. Even right now it feels kinda like I slowed down. I kinda feel like it's like nineteen ninety seven or I feel like it's like nineteen ninety one, nineteen ninety two, something like that. Where these these different moments in my life that seem to kind of just like a stretch of uncertainty. You don't know if you're like going fast enough. You don't know if you're you're gonna be there too long. But it's kind of like being in a not yeah desert yeah desert, but not in a bad desert. Like it's not a desert like Moses desert, but it's kind of like a desert. It's only this only thing that's come to my mind about it. Like being in a desert period. But being safe, though, like you're not dying, but you're you don't see the civilization. You don't see the light shit. You don't see like what you're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm talking like life changes real fast. And it's usually um, most of these markers are people, though, like in a lot of your desert people, periods. It's just the same people. And then life changes, whether it's job, education or whatever relations, then there's new people and thus a new chapter starts. So I kind of feel like. Every so many odd years in these cycles, we experience those type of things. And um, it's given me an opportunity to look back on previous cycles or loops or, you know, eclipses, if you will. Because once we start talking about cycles and loops and perspectives, you're already in the eclipse knowledge already. So all we got to do is parallel that shit over to the sky for real. We, we halfway there, but, you know, I'm going to let myself work. But, yeah, it's kind of... um. Past nine years has been silly for me. <laughs> my life, my life is way different. And things that I thought were true about my life or about myself are the things that changed the most in this most recent cycle. And um, being able to have documented a lot of it through YouTube has been unique for people, let alone myself, like unique for me, for sure. But this experience that we have in our generation is unique for people <laughs> like people being able to roll back time and see themselves and measure that way or to repeat things and verify things over time that's new you know because of technology and me being a uh, experiment if you will you know first gen type shit at growing spiritually while being documented that's very interesting to me um and it's aided in how ridiculous the shift has been. Because if I had done it privately or quietly, I, I don't imagine it being as uh, dynamic as it's been for me. Whereas because I've uh, submitted myself to public um, opinion, public thought patterns, public workflows, you know, just like I've embedded myself in the eyes of more people, um, I know for sure that that has influenced everything uh, greatly. I don't know to I don't know how much the public has nudged it all, but I know it's uh, it's it's in there. You know what I'm saying? It's mixed in there. Everything, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, the Joe spirits, the narcs I got to deal with on email, like all of that plays a part. It nudges you. It nudges you as a, as a human being. You know. Not as the uh, persona on the channel or the having to be, you know, primed for the lesson type shit, just as a person to experience that, you know, a lot of people will never experience that because they're not crazy enough to put themselves in front of this many people. But for those of us who have, um, it's easier than in person, but it might be scarier than in person because at least in person, I could punch you in the face. On the internet, you don't know who's watching you. You don't know who got their clothes on. You don't know who got their clothes off. Pause. But I'm just saying, it's real. That's real, too. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about it. Like, if you don't think about it, you find yourself in some real, you know, so whatever. We ain't got to do that. Not, not on this. But it, that's that's an element, too. Like, it's very overlooked, by the way. Um. Yeah, definitely a lot of moments in my life could could not have happened unless I had subjected myself to this type of uh, thing that we're all doing.
Yeah, they call it they call it content creation. It's really just narrative building. And on a metaphysical level, it's really like uh sparring spiritually. If you appreciate that, like if you appreciate spirituality, it really helps you fine tune your words. It helps you fine tune your awareness. It helps you like uh uh if you're empathetic or if you're like uh how what are these people called? Like empaths or uh feelers for for us <laughs> you uh when you do things you can feel how people respond to it so so it has helped me determine if i'm hitting too hard there we go like if you're practicing form and stuff and you're doing strikes and stuff you you have really no way of knowing if you you're striking hard enough until you get like an actual person to spar with. And now I'm talking about sparring with knowledge. I'm talking about sparring with ideas, narrative, or just like the way I, I, I interact with music and share my perspective. Like, I don't know how alone, I, I would never know how crazy I was or how accurate I was or how good I was or how tone deaf I was unless I subjected myself to this black mirror here <laughs> and then allow the response. And what I'm saying is if you're an empathetic person, the responses have a temperature to them. So for me, I can tell if I get a warm response or I can tell if I get a cold response. I can tell when things are a little bit more heightened and I can tell when things are a little bit more, you know, passive in the desert, like in the desert. So that's kind of like a life hack for real because there's no other platforms that I've experienced so far that does that immediately for you. So like if you're a person who's feeling like I am, the people, the people mirroring the shit back to you, it happens instantly. So you have the option and opportunity to change instantly. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It holds you accountable spiritually. Does that make sense? Like it's a, I guess I'm describing accountability shit or something. But yeah, but that changes you too. That that definitely. I can't. I can't even, bro. I don't even know how to think if I never if I didn't have this experience. I don't know how I would have done it, bro. Like I don't even. I don't know when the, the convergence happened, but looking back, like not having that type of feedback and pushback and shit. I don't know how far, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how good I would be to people, to myself. Really. So thank you very much for keeping it real with me. Oh, man. Shout out to George Desiree. I see you. Lee in the building. He said, I needed this 3 a.m. What's up, family? What's good, Lee? Haru says, your piece was just replaying the previous joint. Squad. Shout out to Replay Game. Slicky knows in the building. What up, fan? Peace to all. Nameless says, we don't see the entire EMF light spectrum. We don't. Calypso's in the building. Live long and prosper. Nanu, Nanu, all that stuff. Jay Burke's in the building. Octa Damn Shadow. Kitty Bo Biddy. <laughs> That's a funny name. For Sale says, sounds like some county sheriff set up stuff to me, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to, talk to me. Billy Batson's in the building. Pat Lee, I see you. Haru. I had that happen to me last week, actually. Hey, yo. Oh, you talking about the, the people who swear they know you? Billy Batson says Wayward Pines. That was the one, sir. Yeah, I was trying. I was looking for it. Is Wayward Pines? There's another show like that, too. The uh, I keep seeing trees. But Wayward Pines is one, and there's another one, too. Whatever. You know those weird towns that always got a secret, and you got to wait like three seasons until they tell you what the secret is, but it ain't the secret they promised in season one? Remember Lost did that dumb shit with the black cloud? You know what I'm talking about? The black cloud that was going through the forest where they found the little jungle gym for the tigers, you know, the Pavlo dog experiment. And he was like, what's the black smoke? And then at the end of it, it's like Adam and Eve, <laughs> Cain and Abel. Like that was an old goddamn Cain flying through the jungle. You lying bastards. Gas lit the shit out of us by season 12. But yeah, that type of thing, basically. It's a dumb, dumb type of shows. That's what life feels like that's the horror part or that's the nightmarish part of life being able to see it 
unfold before it unfolds and then it unfolds in a nightmarish way and you're like why do i foresee nightmares (laughs) because like you gotta you scare yourself seeing it ahead of time and then you scare yourself again living through it and it's like it's a little too much dog like you don't think that's heavy-handed you're like spirit you don't think like you can give me some cooler powers next time like the fuck But being able to feel and feel deeply is a, a prerequisite, I think, for my for for my for my stuff. Uh, it's one of the things you fight against the most, especially if you're a dude. Double doubly sure if you're a black dude, uh, triply sure if you're a black dude that has had hood or hood adjacent experiences that uh, constantly test you. Constantly tested. Constantly. We're constantly tested. I think that's what makes us a little bit more aggressive overall while we have that uh, type of reputation socially. Do you think like we're just choosing to be hard or choosing to be thugs or something? It's really not that. It's like how you adapt to being tested. And a lot of untested people make judgments about tested people. And, and that's where a lot of the flack or the, uh, you know, the miscommunication and narratives comes from. That's why the solutions are kind of tone deaf because some things you can't really subscribe to or solve for until you've lived through it. And and you can't negate those experiences either. So it's it's not just a matter of telling a person, well, even despite those experiences, you should be able to do like I did. No, (laughs) no, they ain't how none of that work. Uh, And you don't appreciate that until you order. You don't appreciate humanity until you're a little bit older to see it reiterate itself in different forms. And you go, oh, okay, that's what's going on. This shit ain't under control at all. This shit is controlled randomness. <laughs> it's not under control. It's random as fuck, but it's guided randomness. It's like, you know, cone. It's funnel. It's funneled random. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. You know, the simulation's running a funnel on randomness. It doesn't let it get too crazy to where it's out of bounds it's out of control and and that's kind of call back to earlier what i was saying about how society is showing us all these clowns and incompetent people and things are still functioning like how many bridges and trains and shit blown up but you still go to the grocery store like by all measurements on paper we should be at a screeching halt at some point yet shit is still flowing you know get what i'm saying so like that tells you there's some type of design or uh catch all code behind the madness and then that makes you think less about the people and then more about the system or simulation itself and that's the kind of like the path you started on right <laughs> like when you're younger or pre-adolescent and you're like what is god <laughs> it's like oh shit we're back at one here we go the same question that started me on this madness i still don't have the fucking answer to like I, you know till this day i'm not quite sure what god is um and, and that's not like in a negative, that's more so in a realizing how uh, even even when you're tapped in, you're no wiser to the truth of that matter, of the creator matter, or, or yourself, in fact, like, you know, having different spiritual gifts or awarenesses doesn't mean you get it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? it's kind of harder because you're in possession of a sensitivity that no one else has documented or acknowledges. So you're, you're, you're in a dark twice actually. And in fact, maybe that's the design of it. Maybe that's kind of the initiation of all of this. And you kind of do it as you watch me, like, if you didn't have these particular set of perspectives, in your disposal or in your awareness set to kind of like watch this experiment of me helps you get like, you know, you know how it was when we were in school and you prepare for the test day and stuff and you look for the people who took the good notes. <laughs> You're like, yo, you got the notes from Tuesday real quick. Can I copy your notes real quick? Like, you know, this portal allows you to copy my notes, whether or not you had to go through those experiences to, to draw those same type of observations or conclusions. I think that's the true value in 
me talking to you guys. It's not even like how my shit's turning out. It's how figuring it out helps you figure something out too. And then that has a cumulative effect. A ripple, an echo. And then you start seeing it in the environment. And then it comes back and it rains, precipitates, and is right in front of me again. You know what I mean? That's all the mechanics of it, at least. That's what it seems like. I could be wrong, though. I could be bugging. I'm usually in. Two Cavelli's in a building. I see you. Peru said his story is an older lady I went to a course with started talking to me, but I don't even remember her at all. All I know is that she lives close. Forcello said I just flipped a booger at it and kept it moving, and I kept my pistol close just in case. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. I haven't done that before. That sounded gangster to me. Data says, MG, I'm still processing the last 3 a.m., so catch you on the replay. Oh, Lord. I didn't watch my last 3 a.m. I had no idea. Um, I had went six or seven hours. I know, I think I touched on music or numbers and stats and websites and things like that. I think we're at music.com, right? I was talking about something. I don't know. Don't give me the line. Yeah, that's crazy. Man, my man said he was still processing it. My bad, Beta. Billy Batson says, I, lo- I live in the blind spot. Yes, sir. Shout to Dragon S, Celestial Homie, hashtag squad. Rail says, you're a whisked MG. So what does this eclipse mean? I'm going to be in Texas when they hit it. <laughs> what does the eclipse mean? X marks the spot. Saturn. Serious. I don't, I don't know yet. I think I'm in a second once I address the rest of the chat, I'm gonna look into it. I'm gonna look into some of the uh what's that called? Ancidotal notes that are associated with it, such as uh NASA experimenting with some type of rockets on that day. CERN, of course, probably the most relevant one, at least in category. Um people questioning how is the moon going to be in Texas at 2 p.m. when it's supposed to be in China for the eclipse. And that goes back to the bigger question, like about flat earth or domed or semicircles, whatever, hologram, whatever it is. But it's always a valid question. And its answer is usually complicated. Like the answer that you would get from NASA or science requires you to understand scientific principles. (laughs) And people are just trying to figure it out in a common sense way, like you told me. Nighttime means the moon is near. And if it's nighttime in China, then the moon is near. So so you have to also explain to me, why isn't the moon near? Like, is it speeding up? Is it slowing down? As soon as you start out giving me gravity and light bending and tilt and axis and stuff, I don't feel like you're really answering my question. Because you can't describe nothing else like that. You can't make that work on paper. You can't make that work for nothing in a grocery store. So don't, don't talk to me like that. Like, that's, that's foul, bro. It sounds smart, but it's convoluted. It's, it don't mean it don't mean nothing. Like you can balance the equation and make up anything. That's what niggas who play Dungeons and Dragons do, literally. Like they practice doing that. It doesn't mean it's right. So that part of it. <laughs> what the fuck's the moon doing? And then when you question the moon, you're like, well, maybe it's not the moon. Maybe it's K2, Rehu, maybe it's Nibiru, Planet X. Ha <laughs> ha. X marks the spot. Get it? Could be a transit of planet X for all we know. The sun that's behind the sun that you always hear about, you know. And we've been what forecasting that or trying to speak that into existence since at least what is that's that like Dr. Malachi's New York type of stuff, right? I don't know who the mainstream white people who brought that forward. Was that uh David Ick? David Icky? Maybe he brought that forward. And I think Jordan Maxwell may have touched on it. Coast to coast may have some Planet X, Nibiru stuff. But that's from Malachi Z, or, you know, shout out to the ancestors. Although he's still with us, but he locked up, so. You know how those things go. But, um, yeah, so you got the Planet X uh, reminder, if you will, ping. And I think that maybe that's what it all is, honestly. I think maybe that's what this all is. I ain't gonna hold you. Because part of me does believe that there's another world. I 
I feel like I remember a different world. Because I can feel them. Life has a tone for me, like my life, I guess. My life has a tone here, like a vibration. And sometimes I have memories of places that are in a different pitch. They're in a different tone. I don't know, you know, they're just pieces of memories or dreams or something in that field. But they, the, the tone is what tells on it. Regular dreams don't feel like nothing. They feel like how it feels when you're sleeping and waking up. They're, they're your resting state. But, the, when, but when you're immersed in a reality or you astral out in a reality, there's like this wave, like a warmth, like water almost, but it has a tone to it. It's like heaviness. It's like there's a weight but it's in a certain pitch. So I felt different tones of realities before. So I know there's other worlds, but I don't know if in this, if there's like reachable worlds, like in this body from this place, that I don't know. That that to me, honestly, is speculation on everybody's part. Until it's not. And what makes it not that is direct contact with those beings, plants, objects, materials from that environment. That's what would, that would have to hit the table for the collective zeitgeist to change, which it feels like a lot of this is leading towards. I, I'm, I'm afraid of that. Like, I'm afraid that that's really the simple answer to all of this is disclosure is revelations. As if, um, your bunt cake, you know, those uh, those glass bunt cake holders, you know, it's all your grandma used to have them. Like if she, your grandma was in the hood and she made her own cakes because she knew you was coming over for Sunday. Like if she put that bunt cake <laughs> in the glass holder. But imagine, you know, during the age of Pisces, allegedly, we were in the dark. So we had like an artificial domed silk sheet or something. Um, keeping us hidden, you know, equally from what's outside and vice versa. And then they call that the age of belief because without being able to see the other side of this veil, if you will, which we get from our Indian ancestors, they call it the veil, right? Like, let me know in the chat if I'm bugging. You've heard it called that before, right? The veil. Well, certain people, grandmas will say were born and they're able to see through the veil, right? So we're in this veiled period which corresponds to the idea that Pisces is the age of belief. You only have to believe if you don't know. <laughs> so you don't know because you're hidden, you know, a cult, right? You know, everything's in a secret society. Everything's in a fraternity. Uh, you're in a church-like state where very few people have the keys and the rest of you have to uh, memorize and repeat, like brainwash yourselves basically to a certain agenda and not question these things off the strength of darkness, off the strength of ignorance, off the strength of not knowing. And then this age is supposed to be the, the age of knowing, like knowledge. And it, it doesn't necessarily say it's usable or correct or applicable. It's just the internet, you know, you have access to tons of information. AI has t tons of narratives, but how many of them are right? So Aquarius is tricky like that, but for that to coalesce with revelations, to me, it just seems like someone's removing the veil from grandma's bunk cake and now you're able to see them. And then they, of course, we don't know that all of them over there see us. You know what I'm talking about? Even when we deal with like uh, the shape-shifting UFOs and those beings, we're not, um, how do I say this? The, there's no reason to suggest that their civilization knows that we're here. You know, we were aiming to be like abducted and like an armada an army of Martians are coming. What if these Martians are just the fucking um, the Space Force or the uh, zebra clearance niggas like we got in the Pentagon? Like we got niggas in the secret space program here. What if the niggas come to Earth are in the secret space program? And when they drop their shit and get caught up in these electromagnetic weapons white boy been making, they fucked up, fucked up. And then their mama and daddy of their situation got to come looking for them type shit. Like, you don't know what, you know, we don't know what type of time these niggas is on for real. We don't know if they're kids. 
you don't know even know if they're kids for real. They could be like 10 year olds, you know, relevant to their civilization. And they're just like, and they're in a foreign whip real quick. And they, they hit earth, you know, they found the jam frequency or whatever in their grandma closet. It's the same story. They tell you how white people found America for real, for real. Let's, let's talk about it. Like the more in Corsica, I believe was on his deathbed and he was a navigator and so happened that Christopher Columbus was able to procure those maps at his death. I mean, you've heard this story before with Nikola Tesla, right? Allegedly, all of his inventions that he died with in his apartment was confiscated and ended up in Donald Trump's uncle, John Trump's hands, right? For him to study. So imagine the same thing. That's Christopher Columbus, aka John Trump, pulling up on the moors with the ill-ass maps and the way to navigate the ocean and the tides. And boom, a year later, they're here wearing our grandmas and shit. But not 1,400 years prior, <laughs> not a minute prior to that, you know, according to narrative. So I think it's going to be the same thing when it comes to the uh, the others. Uh, we'll call them that for now. The others. Everything is pointing to it. That is the only card in the deck that has not been pulled from the Conspiracy Theorist Loadout Kit 2001 edition, September 11th. Uh, the, the actual gnosis change, like when your society goes from the Khazarian illusion we lived through since, I guess, the 50s to the mainstream pop culture thing that we did post-Industrial Revolution, post-World Wars, then we're back in this social justice thing, starting with Obama, of course, and you seen the cops and the, you know, don't want to be the dead horse here. And then then the debauchery or the uh, idiocracy to kind of like dumb it all down. And then now you rebuild it. You rebuild it at its most vulnerable, at a breaking point, actually. This is like full on mind control type shit. This is like breaking a bitch in for real. You know what I'm talking about? Like this is some pimp and hoe shit. Oh, on, on overdose, but on a spiritual, you know, subconscious level against the whole population. Like they they try to pimp hand they try to pimp hand us with the lockdowns and they try to bitch smack us with some of these diseases. It's very uh, heavy handed and this is not the era for heavy handedness. So it's hurting them. But we but you know, what I always say, it says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But it didn't mean that the weapons weren't formed. Oh, yeah, the weapons definitely formed. So you got to react to that, too. You got to know that someone really just tried to open hand smack you for real in front of your girlfriend. So, spiritually, so. Billy Bassett says, I was moving in that room and y'all found me. Inmates are being locked down during the eclipse. The connections, the corrections are running on a holiday schedule on the eclipse. Oh, wow, that's, that's deep. Roderick Williams, I see you, brother. Shout out to Mr. Now in the boot. L Reborn says, peace and abundance to all in the chat. That's what's up. Uh, for sales, they ain't buying what they selling because it's the same wet turd, but in a different bag. Yikes. Yowzes. Greg Johnson, MG is saying they are not operating on all pro mode. Mm -mm. This is not an all Madden lineup in this reality right now. But it used to be, though. That's what I'm saying. You never know that shit might change again. you like, that's what I'm saying. Like, we ain't researching the right research, and I don't think. <laughs> Where else is word up? They live. They can't see it until they're ready. They hold it on. Yeah, man. And you just got to respect it now. Billy Bassett says, I was born with the glasses from They Live. I was the weirdo my whole life. And you fuckers gave my name to the, uh, to the rainbow people. Oh, man. Volko says, peace mode. Fate be peace king. Venus says, big likes in the building. Squads. Dominant sound. Peace, peace. Baby's kids. The other boot. You dig? Louisiana in the building. Mr. Now says, and they act like you're the asshole for waking them up before an airplane engine hits their bed. But I guess some need to get out the way. Right, white rabbit. Listen, bro. I ain't even. What did they say? I'm not. I ain't no. I'm no evangelical Negro, man. I tried that a little bit. I try to get people right with Jesus. It's like since high school, though. I had that way about me. 
I think I converted a half Chinese kid. Yeah. I used to talk to him about God all the time. But not really from like a heavy Bible Christian, but that's all I knew. So it, I put it in the Christian box, but it was I was really telling him more about my personal experiences and like different prayers that I thought were powerful or pivotal in my life. And to him, you know, his parents were like computer scientists. His mother's Chinese, so she was kind of atheist. So he didn't have that. He didn't have that superstition thing. He didn't have none of that. Everything was just, it was cause and effect, but he went deep like that. He went woke, he went in it. So, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't, he wasn't rocking in the science or nothing like that. So he didn't have a frame of reference for the shit I was talking about. And then um, he went to college, joined a Christian, uh, I guess, fraternity in college. And then he met his wife through that. And I think they were both virgins and everything. They got married and had kids and whoop, 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 whoop. I was like, if the shit worked for him, why the fuck didn't it work? You know what I'm saying? Like, the shit don't work for me. But I, I remember, you know, and I think that's awesome, actually. Like, I entered his life and, of course, corrected him to start his family. I think, you know, I can't take all the credit for it. I'm just saying, like, I remember meeting Mike and he wasn't hearing none of that shit. And then to see him base his family off of it was beautiful, you know, in, in that version of my reality. But shit don't work for me. <laughs> those environments don't work for me. Those people don't work for me. Because those demons are different. Like, Just the sexual devi deviancy in church is too heavy. It's the heaviest, like, um, it's, it's fairly unacknowledged, but a lot of people try to tell you the truth or make jokes about it. It's like how your preachers are really pimps or whatever. And a lot of people be thinking that's metaphorically. It's not metaphorical. I've, wit I've witnessed, I've witnessed some... The most blatant, let, let, let me say it this way, the most blatant, disrespectful, or the most blatant, hypocritical, or the most blatant, two-faced scenarios and people that I've encountered in my personal journey have been those who are really into church. And, and there's not even no close second. There's like, they're first place by like a mile. And that's definitely not God's fault, <laughs> but it, it, it just speaks to the culture of it. it. That's, that's the seed. That's the, that's the root or the leaves on the seed that was planted in those environments. Unfortunately, whether you feel better about coping about it by alleging it's from slavery or not, but you would have to know where you come from to even say that. But yeah, I I think that was the first platform I, I wanted to see fall apart. Because there's just so much hidden abuse there. And I, I wasn't even tripping on that because it, it that exists outside of it. But it was the fact that people were allowed to be just like everybody else, but then hide, then 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 have the nerve to say like, but God or something like that's the only part that really rubbed me the wrong way, is that you repping for big homie for real allegedly, and then you know you don't find out about narcissism and all that stuff till later. So, you know, I held them to a higher standard, and they performed at a lower standard. That's the best way to describe that in all the environments. Once you get close enough and into it enough, you start to see who people really are. <clears throat> that kind of fuck with me. Well, I'd be Christian right now, you know what I'm saying? I'd, I'd be in church somewhere trying to be somebody's, you know, deacon, minister, guest, pastor. Can't do it. Because somebody's married wife. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, act like y'all know. This is real life. I ain't got no reason to cap. Shout out to Premier Homes. Yeah, a gift for the present. 
but to us it's lonely. Yes. Forcell says, MG the future, please believe we appreciate all you do for us. You keep your third eye open. I appreciate you. Haru says, started doing Gmantra recently, and yeah, that just kind of gave me a second spiritual awakening for some reason. Billy Bassett says, MG got the Starship. Yeah, the Starship Enterprise logs. All them fucking little soliloquies poet used to do at the beginning of Oz. That's all I'm doing for real. I'm like narrating the tides. Like in today, the United States had it fucked up and Israel just provoked Iran. Will they win? Or will they suffer the consequences? Like, mm mm. <laughs> Yo, just, just nigga logic CNN for real. Who would ever thought? Who would ever thought? I didn't think I was headed this way. Now, when I opened up Fruity Loops for the first time, that ain't, that ain't, none of those thoughts jumped in. Baby's kid says, "Reflecting the moon does through the dark of the night, like shadow boxing." Zenith, I just moved out of my place too, so I'm in the desert with you, bro. It's a turning point feeling. Make your way through a labyrinth for liminal space. It's soul searching for me, Zenith. Exactly. Liminal space is a beautiful way of cat encapsulating the reaction if you react to liminal spaces that's how these moments or desert moments feel like that's a beautiful word for it it wouldn't be a word i would grab towards but if you guys have ever seen liminal spaces they provoke a certain emotion in certain people not everybody of course but i i sense that if you're a feeler or an empath liminal spaces are kind of like triggering a nostalgia in you or like those weird feelings like not scary maybe even scary to some people but like these are liminal spaces i'll open up a couple they're cool So basically, what you'll notice with the liminal space is like they're lifeless. So like this is a mall when it's closed and nothing is open. So like natural liminal spaces would be like abandoned projects. <laughs> if you ever been to abandoned projects that were like about to be burnt down, or abandoned church after like schools that are closed like during the summer and you sneak in or something. Hashtag allegedly, like or abandoned malls or pathways and tunnels, all that type of stuff. It gives you that feeling of like, A, either A, you're not supposed to be there, or B, you're there, but something else is supposed to be there and it's missing. So it gives you that that contrast of like, you know, a heightened sense of, I don't know, novelty or awareness. <laughs> like this shit right here, like the underground, in-ground water thing seems very familiar to me for some reason. Like, I think the bathhouses and the uh, aqueducts and the old Roman Moorish and all those type of civilizations may have been more like this than we think. But looking at it empty, it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, over flooded subway or train station? Like, come on now. Come on now. I'm not about to do that. Like, I can do it because I'm gangster, but r real life, though, like, if I ain't got to, I ain't now. We, we might as well just pack this up. We had enough screen real estate for this one. So there's a bunch of kids, uh, scooters or something. Oh, so it's like an abandoned daycare. Yeah. With like the one light on in the back, in the chair and away for no reason. You're like, yo, what's back there? And you're like, you know what? It doesn't even matter what's back there. Or shit like this. Like everything's dark. This is indoors, but it looked like it's an outdoor courtyard and there's only a couple of lights. You're like, okay. Where, where, do, where do terrorists plant the bomb at? That's all you need to know on that map. So yeah, bro. Liminal spaces. There's an artist that has perfected. Oh, let me just show you that. There's an artist who has perfected that, by the way. One, one of many, but he perfected it using 3D. I think he's called Outrun Youth. I usually use him for like wallpapers and stuff. But now we got like AI is kind of not fair. But yeah, he does liminal spaces as a prerequisite to his art. Like, there's always this guy, you know, approaching the sun or the moon. He's always in like these places where people aren't supposed to be. But he's capturing that science of 
that feeling you get. Is he has an Instagram? There's some more profound ones in it, like these. There we go. That's the vibe. Yeah, that's that. That's that three AM vibe for sure. That that that's it. That's how. That's what it, how it feels is how it looks. Blue, blue. Da blue. Da blue. Da. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, stop playing with me. Don't do that. But that's not the one. Come on now. Come come on. Come on. Help me help you. Just just come on. Yes. That's how desert desert uh chapters or segments feel. Shout to King Noel. Shout out to Damian Pacheco. I see you. Greg Johnson says, everybody thinks they are wise until they get punched in their convictions. Bars. Swan J says, we here, bro, squad. Twin Pines, Twin Peaks. There you go. Primary Home says, relentlessly tested and passing relentlessly with results. Cornucopia. They tried to get through the red radiation and failed two weeks ago. God dang. Shout out to Jeff, Jeff, Jeff A. Peace. Shit. Colin Trapper, Nick. I see you, brother. Shout out to the West Side. More Life MG. One quick question. Who was the emperor or sultan that George Washington wrote to that was in Morocco? Was it Moulay Salomain? Um, I'm not familiar with that name. So I don't know if it's a, what is that called when people are given multiple names? They're not synonyms, but there's a word to describe someone who has different names different titles, different languages, but all of them is that person. I don't know if Moulay Salamane there or Moulay Salamane is also Sidi Mohammed's in the Castile family's people or, you know, empire. It should be, though. It's uh, George Washington's letter to Sidi Mohammed, but George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin have different letters. There's letters to Morocco that accompany the treaties of peace and friendship to Morocco. So a lot of that documentation is not that it's hidden. It's just that we don't know the name. They're not, how do I say it? They're not uh, hyperlinked on websites about these things in a very apparent way. But if you get wise through books or leads, you can search the Library of Congress website and find all of them. They're, pub they're matter of fact or matter of public record for the most part. And anything that you find in like the writing from the 1800s, especially that's supposed to exist in terms of like correspondences between these politicos and especially when it comes to treaty or warfare, I, I suppose a, a Freedom of Information Act request would render the rest if you're, you know, looking for the rest of the narrative or context for some reason. But yeah, you start with City Letter to City Muhammad. That'll take you to the website. And that website also has the Benjamin Franklin description of the populations of the West being Swarthy and Tawny at his time. So that that convergence of a melanated, dominated Europe starts to change as of Benjamin Franklin. And that there's so much value. Um there's so much help. There's so much confirmation in that fact that it's indeed Benjamin Franklin saying it. It's indeed verified and backed up and vetted by the government. So we we kind of transcended the emotionalism or what I remembered or I used to get A's on those tests or or or. I was a fan of watching that with my aunt and my grandma. We watched all the A&Es, you know what I'm saying? Like that pride that we got from paying attention, even if the shit we paid attention to was flaw. You, you kind of like karate chop all that dumb shit. It's like, yo, just read the letters first. Like, we don't even need to talk about how we feel about it. Read it. And if you read those letters and it don't challenge the way you currently look at the United States or it doesn't challenge what your upbringing or narrative was given to you about it, then, you know, you ain't nothing to worry about. Just keep, keep on going. But 
knowing how that joint really hit me when I first read it. It's like, yo, these niggas play too much. <laughs> like, that's, like all I can say is they play too much. Like, and it's, it was type disrespectful how they handled us. And I really don't feel bad for what could happen to them for doing it that way with this generation of people, like who we are. Like, you know, like, um, I kind of feel like, I don't know, I have to, I have to work on it some more. I have to, I have to uh, ponder a little bit more about what has happened with our generation of millennials and the people adjacent, how we see, how we came here kind of seem different, you know what I mean? Challenging the, the way or challenging the workflow or challenging the, you know, status quo, I guess, if you will, on how you do anything, whether it's the internet, music, we, we put a monkey wrench in a lot of things. We are Marlo from The Wire. You want it to be one way. <laughs> you wanted it to be one way, but it's the other way. Shout out to Billy Hamilton. Who built the Who built the moon and why? Jay Burks says, right, dreams be more real than this reality sometimes. Baby K says, maybe it's different planes of overlapping existence. MG, you should check on this short anime series from Toonami. The whole show is about a city and a dome. And no one remembers how they became. Oh, it's called the Big O. I used to catch the Big O tsunami trailers all the time. And I had set very high intentions to watch that because even the art style was like on my radar at the time. But I don't know why I never got into the Big O. Even when I got crunchy rolling stuff, I never I never uh swung back. But that's just a confirmation I should. So Billy, shout out to Billy Hamilton. He was like, Big O. That would be a good one to watch if I can find it. But yeah, there are people in the dome who start with amnesia. Oh, that's that's Attack on Titan. That's a ABC had a show, right? With the dude from Breaking Bad, the, the cop under the dome. So yeah. That's that Tiamat love. That's a that's that she old potion. That's that's pretty much what every Gnostic describes our existence as, in fact. And once you understand that Gnostics are older or the precursor to Christianity, then you'll see why Christianity or the Hebrews echo the same sentiment. And honestly, it's kind of weird that no one else has invented another thing since then. But if they would, if you would have to write any type of religious book today with the gnosis of everything, with like, you know, red squares coming out of the ocean, You'd include all the same ingredients all over again. Like people have gnosis of the ice wall in Antarctica and don't have the boats or resources to see for themselves. So they have to believe and speculate and try to describe images on a computer screen or iPad screen to people in the future who may not have it. You know, you'll end up like no matter who's writing these stories, they're all saying the same damn thing. Religion is just the 3 a.m of the ancestors who were peeping game during their time and their cycle. Religion is 3 a.m. It's not a manual of behavior. Behavior is parented by feelings. Nothing knowledge can do can change a person's feelings. There's a radiant, there's a radius or a, uh, there's a relationship between what a person feels and what a person knows in that gradient of energy you can't control that you can control what people know but you can't control what they feel you know what I'm talking about like, yeah you can tell me these are the facts you can fact check this you can wiki this you can write books about this but as long as I feel like something's off or unsatisfactory to the narrative then nothing you know or say, as a matter of fact, will, will stop me. You get what I'm saying? So, like, feelings and behaviors cannot be regulated for real like that, not with knowledge. So religion, of course, couldn't teach nobody how to behave because religion doesn't address with how you feel about what you're reading or pro- how you process it. It's going to be the same as the way the person wrote it anyway. We experience that with just communication. 
Like I said it like this, but I received it like that. No, you meant it this way. No, I'm pretty much, you know, now do that with thousands of years between you and Wi-Fi. Like stop playing. Stop being cute and clamorous. So once you understand the 3 a.m. nature of the Bible for real and how it's not too much different than your current reality, then you don't have to question whether or not it's real. <laughs> Did a human write it? <laughs> then it's real, nigga. Like, it's real in that effect. It's real in the fact that some humans wrote these stories. That's real. Someone wrote this. And what they were writing was 3 a.m. as fuck. That's all I need to know. <laughs> All I need to know is like niggas who are supposed to be throwing spears in the trees and shit was seeing flying craft. That's really all. That it, it don't go no further than that. It ain't about you know if I if I put a napkin in my shirt when I eat steak or something like that ain't that ain't what that was supposed to be for. Real. Oh, you ain't supposed to be wearing eating that shellfish, brother. How come your t-shirt ain't feathered, brother? Like that's militant. You that that type of mind controlling MK Ultra is for military. Where you need everybody to be on the same accord. That's militant. That's warfare. That means you're about to do something violent, by the way. Don't miss the dancing <laughs> scriptures here. So, nah, the militant part of it is seems to be that's the only thing that people benefited from, really. That's why they said, oh, you know, they use that to control you. You're like, yeah, it, it is a militant. It is a militant operation going on in these stories, yes. But them documenting it wasn't to give future people any instructions. Um, I've read this book <laughs> and no one writing that book was like, Hey, yo, little nigga, a thousand years in the future, make sure you get your ass together and do it like this. That is not what happened at all. These shit was written in third person. Know that. Jesus was talking to Peter. He wasn't talking to me. And a lot of shit that he told Peter, I already knew. So it would have been a wasted conversation to have with me. See what I'm saying? It ain't like that. We treat it like that. But it's not like that. Woo, 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 woo. ET phone home, day based kids, some days. Wait, why did it jump like that? Gray Johnson says D D wizard in the building. You're right. Seven Circle says, just dropping in. Why no on the way talking about Putin and Jesus is black? You said, how come no one's talking about the Jesus, the, the black Putin, the black Jesus? Oh, some people are. You're seeing, I think the brother Billy Batson posts a YouTube collage respond video type dude in the Discord sometimes who deals with that, like different Viners or TikTokers who have... I even seen in my um, algorithm on YouTube for you where they're saying um, basically some channel, I guess they're Hebrew, Israelite, leaning, whatever. But they're they're showing that the white people are responding to that fact and what they've been saying. And I haven't played none of them because that's what I said before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what is it? Oh, it was the family guy that did that with the Cleveland. It's like, that's what I was telling you before. So... To that extent, why do I think more brothers and sisters aren't jocking that or still feasting off of that? <laughs> Yo, shout out to the funny Philly brother I saw at the grocery store the other day. He was trying to do a stand-up routine for no reason. It was hilarious, low-key. The jokes weren't funny, but the energy was hilarious. And then I was like processing it and was saying something. And he turned back around. He was like, what? Y'all still feasting on that? <laughs> like, God, where did, where did you hide these niggas, man? They must be in Philly somewhere. But yeah, um, I said it um, most recently. Because, you know, most of the pictures I'm showing you are the Coptic Christian pictures or the Orthodox saint depictions. Those are the expensive ones. Those are the ones that cost thousands of dollars that I'm always showing you on the screen. And I choose those on purpose. So like if anyone has any contention, con contention about it, or, you know, think we're attempting to Afro centralize something that's inherently white, they would be an error because white people have 
categorically framed, museumed, and priced these objects. It was no niggas was involved in bringing this forward at all. So that stuff, proof, evidence, whatever you want to call it, has always existed in our zeitgeist. Even brothers who have like ancient and modern Britain type stuff or, uh, you know, Hakeem Bey and any of those brothers in the Moorish paradigm, um, even some Prince Hall Freemasons, if they honest, have resources and stuff that have already verified these things as facts. So you may not see from your spiritual, other spiritual channels, a necessary, uh, what's that called? A slap, or what's that called? A knee-jerk reaction to none of this stuff because that stuff is part of their oath. That's part of their... They have those paintings in their lodge. You feel me? So you may be seeing a lot of people in the spiritual community, or especially in YouTube, you know, none of us are really vetted for real. You don't know what we're part of or who we joined or, you know, the agenda of the agenda, you know, that shit can get deep real fast. You always look for symbols, signs and patterns to deduce it. But th this subject is one of them. If you talk about the heirs of the estate, there's certain groups of people who look just like me and you who already know. That's a fact. Matter of fact, I need y'all to overstand that maybe, you know, digging into my, uh, my, my dad raised me to be a god bag. I need you to overstand this fact that the way I'm able to deduce and bring this stuff forward to light has been done without as much resistance by other brothers too, who are part of groups who already know this. And it's been part of their collective on whether or not they decided to show share that with the rest of us. We would be considered profane, if you will. Like that's how they give it up. That's that's their awareness of humanity. And that's not to say that maybe they're not right or wrong, because I don't know what led to the secrecy, right? I'm missing a piece of the story that they probably have, or even if they don't have it, they work from. Um, there's a piece of the story missing. So some people keep these parts, the, what do they call it? They keep the loud parts quiet on purpose because it's connected to something else that's in their own private agendas. And we don't quite understand it. So to us, it's kind of like foul, it's fucked up, some bootleg and boule shit. You know, we have all this negative veracity towards it because it's hidden and not necessarily because they have demonstrated clearly that they're necessarily against us, if that makes sense. You know, there's, there's coons and tricks on everybody's team, you know. So it ain't that. So, so, so the black Russian shit is, it's only, it's only news to TikTok for real, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of your people in politics and black reparations or any of those false narratives that lean towards that. You see the ball being kicked around Congress and the narrative on news because they these people know already. They know they can't do nothing about that. It's under benign neglect for real. Like that's not just niggas saying cool words. That's for real a policy. They operate off of it. Before we get to their political before they get to their political obligation to the so called United States artificially created citizen group, they have real blood oaths with their real brothers in you know, no, no shame and no uh, guilt tripping and no reverse psychology is going to have them risk that oath because allegedly a lot of those oaths mean death. And I don't know if us normies really appreciate what that means. <laughs> so it's like, do I take the chance of frustrating a normie with the truth to get pushed back, to get blamed, to be called to the, you know, the crucible just for my brothers to find out I'm trying to help these niggas and cause more harm than good. And then I have to go through this, you know, hashtag death over it and lose my benefits package. I, I would say on some real nigga shit, no, it ain't worth it if that's what you, you know, decided to do. So I'm not even mad at them. And and more importantly, I'm not the only thing that they could have done is just expose me to it earlier. But they couldn't break this shit down to me if they wanted to. So what would I be mad at? They don't understand the bigger picture.
they just ritualize it, but they don't understand it. So we still be at square one, whether we started with this shit or not. Because someone else was playing the fuck around. What was I looking for before I said all that crazy shit about the goddamn... Oh, the Saturn. The, um, you said, how come no one's talked about it? Oh, hold on. If you go to my old videos... <laughs> <laughs> when did I talk about it? I talked about I talked about it here one month ago. Putin almost let it all out the spaceship. That's the video I talked. I be on their head like that because I know they can't. Cherokee Nation, the Shalik. My great grandmother's brother's a prince. Hall. Get a tea. Oh, I yeah. see you, brother. Get yeah. in. Yeah. So I talked about it then. And then that TikTok story came out. And they showed Vladimir Putin opening up the Bible with the black Jesus. Allegedly Jesus, by the way. That's the one thing that's kind of really creepy about all this. When you get into their religion and those icons, you're assuming that's Jesus and Mary. Ain't nobody say that. And, and in part two, while I double down on that, and the reason why I think the black American, you know, this is all non brigadier terms, but, you know, the black American Christian persuasion may have a hard time putting this into their worldview because they take for granted that everything circled around Abraham's son, Isaac, and Jacob, and et cetera, that they be forgetting all the time that Abraham had a firstborn son named Ishmael and Ishmael had an Egyptian mother and they went on to live and have their own piece of promise as well. Whether or not their narrative aligns with the so-called Christian narrative, which is how they divided this subject, by the way, you know, socially, but that's irrelevant because if you're saying Russia has an icon of a mother and son masonry and they're black, well, you have to, then entertain something else, which no one having this conversation can understand just yet. And, and this is what's fucking everybody up. Even in the conscious spiritual miracle, I see dead people in the astral projection room, they ass niggas. They still think they from Africa. And, and I can almost, how do I say this? In, in a very selfish, arrogant way, I kind of have to be like this until I'm proven otherwise but it helps me not get caught up in the woods. I have to arrogantly believe that if a person still is talking about we came from Africa, they're not there yet. Like I kind of feel like the out of Africa myth on the conspiracy chart is critical for so-called black conscious people. And that's why I was so disappointed that uh, Brother Panic wouldn't touch on stuff like that or a lot of other spiritual gurus. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that always was like the glaringly obvious deficit they had that made some other part of their game feel like cap to me. Only because if you look at it just a little bit and you're spiritually gifted and you care about your condition and your people at all, you, you, you're going to make sure you don't skip that class is what I'm saying. The brother Bobby Pimmett went to those classes. Now he didn't emphasize his his isness in the Moorish paradigm. He didn't he didn't establish himself in the nationality narrative that you will see a, a Moorish brother or even from like a discipline like we're really just the Hebrew Israelites, like how a Hebrew Israelite today would do. Them brothers stayed neutral to that, but to their detriment, I think, of their level of scholarship. Because because they're afraid of putting themselves in that box. And what I mean is, as soon as you jump back to Babylon and Arcadia and Assyria and all these places that they did talk about, they're talking about, they, they tell you it's our stuff, right? So that, so number one, well, who's us? Is, is the Babylonian stuff our stuff because we're black? Is the Babylonian stuff our stuff because we're West African or Sub-Saharan African? Or is it our stuff? And we are so prolific spiritually at explaining and dealing with it because it's our stuff. And then you have to get into that and be like, well, who are we? They'll all go back to Elijah Muhammad and says, Elijah Muhammad told us we were the Afro-Asiatic black man. 
Elijah Muhammad at that time, for whatever reason, did not expound on what that means. Afro-Asiatic is not sub-Saharan African. So you know what that means, right? That means Elijah Muhammad knew he or they or his demonstration wasn't centered around transatlantic slavery at all. And we go further than that, where uh, the brother or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had his mentor or OG, Fard Muhammad, who we believe was part Dutch, right? And he was high yellow, like some of our part Dutch relatives from the North, right? So, and then his knowledge of the wheel or the mother plane, like all of that Scientology adjacent stuff was there already. This is before any UFO sighting. This is before Area 51. Don't miss the dancing UFO in these stories sometimes, okay? Elijah and them already knew everything I'm talking about, they were talking about, like, you know what I'm talking about? And then there's a lot of speculation amongst the more simple science of America that Elijah and or Far were also part of um, Noble Drew Ali's Seven Heaven School. Mind you, Noble Drew Ali was billed as a Hindu magician prior to all of that. Don't, don't you miss it, damn it. And that's important because that field of study into Hindu and magic and then into Rosicrucianism and all that other stuff that's not said out loud. So the people who understand it privately, when they're talking out loud, they get what the actual narrative is. But it's the babies, it's us who come into it from outside, who hear them talking, and we don't have that key or that glyph to uh, crack it, you know what I'm saying? And then we get frustrated, it was like, how come y'all didn't tell us? But in, to their protection, they did, you know, in a codified, lack of context type of way. And, and to me, that seems like a silly game to play, especially if you're mourning off of the losses of your daughters and sons. Like, What's the point of being all cute and secretive if you're really trying to save little black boys' lives? That's that's where my difference is. Like, I got time to be cute with you niggas. Like, <laughs> it took me damn near 40 years just to get this a little bit. If I can help a brother skip some steps, fuck y'all. Like, tell him. Let the pig decide what they're going to do with the pearls. That, that ain't my responsibility. My responsibility is so that no one looks at me like, damn, this nigga knew the whole time and he ain't say nothing? That's a fucked up feeling to have about your brothers, man. About people who look like you, who's going through what you're going through. That's a fuck. That's why that's fucked up. It's it's not fucked up if everything's equal and you're on an island and you discovered element 113 or 115 and now you can like teleport and you don't want to tell the whole world because you don't want them hunting you or you don't want the bad guys. And then you got to get all diplomatic and democratic about the fucking secret ingredients and you don't tell nobody. That I understand. But don't be sitting here in this prison with me you know, digging a hole out secretly about them planning your escape. But when you come to the lunchroom, you come sit at my table because they're trying to jump you and I got to fight for you. And I got to like, you know, take the beatings with you. And I got to, you know, do the liberty and the marching with you. And I got to vote and I got to work and donate to you. And I got to, you know, go through the struggle of just ordinary life. And then, you know, you know, you as my comrade and my brother and my skin folk, I'm dedicating my spiritual force to you just for you to have been secretly aware of the exit the whole time. That's why that should be foul, King. That's why those oaths be foul, bro. Just that context. Otherwise, you know, you can make a whole bunch of arguments for why it's wise. But don't have me out here pretending with you that we fighting the same giant and we not. That's it. A lot of brothers ain't fighting the same giants, that's all. This kindergarten to these niggas for real. Baby's kid says some things can't be intellectualized and proven they have to experience first. Ultra instinct. My folks just came to me yesterday saying, if you had told me years ago, I would have listened. And I'm just looking at them with my eyes closed and my mouth straight. <laughs> Shout out to Ultra Instinct. You got people, you finally getting the blues from the normies? I haven't had that moment yet. Where people have come back, like nobody, like on the internet or real life, no one has come back to me yet saying, damn, I wish I was listening to all that wild shit you were saying. Because I, th I think my spirit, my subconscious kind of thinks you were right. I haven't had that come to Jesus moment about 3 a.m. yet. But that's good that you guys are. And that means the needle is moving. Amari Onitwa. The bridge collapse in the city that supposedly have close to 90% visibility or the lack thereof of the eclipse. Uh, I don't understand the context of that sentence. You're talking about Baltimore? You're supposed to have great visibility of it? 
Creatures as pimps, you can tell by his eyes. Ghostface will forever. Billy Hamilton says, I tried to, I tried preaching to some strippers, but they weren't trying to hear it. <laughs> Devon says, Big Up MG putting in mad work for the community. I appreciate that observation. Devlon, peace to you. K Dragon says, Jesus never went to church. It's not severing the right, it's not, it's not serving the right purpose, right? Greg Johnson says, Lambs to the slaughter are the sons and daughters when following the shepherds of the flock. K Dragon says, as soon as some Catholic popes started getting money, that business became a franchise. They began to franchise. Yep. B Maverick says, authority abusing and misusing their power. Yes. Day's work says, the back rooms. Shale Guevara says, driving through the rust spell in the dead of the night is the ultimate and liminal space uneasiness. Oh, the rust belt in the dead of the night? I never heard of the rust belt. Thank you for that. Uh, don't put that in my subconscious. Driving through the rust belt at midnight or at the dead of night. Jay Burke says, Suedo, question mark. Which part, which part, by Jay Burke? Blob Dylan's in the building, squad. Ultra Instinct says, anime go crazy. I'm on Hell's Paradise and solo leveling one. Religion is commercial spiritualism. Dogma, yeah, man. It's hard. But you, I mean, I appreciate being exposed to the structures of religion. I appreciate understanding that there's uh, structures in place for people to condition their mentalities and their behaviors through. I just didn't have to struggle with those things as much that a lot of people tend to have gotten something out of that structure. I didn't get out of because I wasn't breaking those. I wasn't climbing that ladder to begin with. So to structure me in or box me in like that was, it was overkill. I was already like that. I didn't need help with that at least. Um, where most brothers my age group were stuck in certain things or confused or unsure. I was just like, it is what it is. You know what I'm talking about? Like God said so, so it is what it is. Nigga, like, I ain't, I'm not here to outbox God in that dogma or that demonstration. A lot of people struggle with it, so they stick to it. They stick to it. I have brothers and relatives who stick to it. Even if spiritually they have outgrown it, they, they definitely stick to the uh, what do they say? Some people need regiments or rituals in that kind of way. For me, I, I always thought it was just a community aspect that keeps people in it. It's like, yo, this is my chance to be around my people more so than the righteous, moral, spiritual mobility of it. Sometimes I think that's like, you know, that's not even first for most people. I think the community is first. Like that Cheers theme song. You want to go where everyone knows. That's what that used to be or seemed to be to me. Now it's like. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> Yo, there is not a scripture in that Bible. I don't care what version of Jonah you got. There is no there is no reason to be asking the congregation if they ever been swallowed like Jonah, like. That is not the, that is not the, uh, what is that called? Metaphorical overlap I needed to associate with that story. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you know niggas is reprobate. So why would you even tie those two themes together? Now, every time I think about Jonah in the well, I'm thinking about <laughs> Jonah in this well. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, yo, pause. Like, is it, like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be like that. Davis R says this, the Rust Belt, characterized by its post-industrial landscape, abandoned factories, and quiet, sometimes desolate towns, offers a unique backdrop that feels both haunting and steeped in history. <laughs> Baby's kid says, you are what you eat, you drink, you think, intake through everything. Zenith says, MG, you ever think about how pond or pound and ponder are all related? Sometimes that beats, waits on the mind, leads to self-reflection, causes a ripple effect in thought. Oh, come on now, Zenith. Zenith then gave us today's knowledge. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. He said, pound, pond, and ponder. Something that beats the weight on the mind, your pound, leads to self-reflection, ponder, and that causes an effect in thought. Pond. Pond.
That's that Bruce Lee, man. Be like water, my friend. Allow your mind to be like water. You can be a still pond or you can be a bunch of ripples. Yeah, man. And the only thing that disturbs the pond of your mind are the quality of your thoughts, for real. Or the quality of the thoughts that you allow to entertain over time, sustained. Because a lot of the vibrations create the shapes or distortions, but they don't imprint on you until you hold them. So, like, if your brain is malleable with, like, you know, the brain is soft with wrinkles. And you got to ask yourself, what's causing it to wrinkle like that or the shape or the connection? I think the science is that since your brain is in water, you create that shape through the system of thoughts that you're entertaining. And then that water and that frequency then presses against the physical matter. And it's kind of like stamped into your brain, whatever that thought form or that energy force was out of your lobe, it stamps it in that shape. So in that way, you choose ultimately what sticks, like you choose the quality of memory or the quality of, uh, you choose the quality of the connection you make with your information. You, you absolutely have to to be a human being, I think. I think like that's part of our design. You have to choose the quality. That's how we get our unique differences because we rank or weight different knowledge, experiences, people, situations differently from each other is how we balance our acts. This is what makes us unique. Or what we play to be important versus what others play to be important. That's what gives us identity and novelty. But I think how we do it is exactly the same. Ultra Instinct asks the question, where do Black Russians go? <laughs> Ultra Instinct says, Bobby always said we was always everywhere. That, and that's the easiest, most concise way of putting it. But everyone should be, and that's and, and that's why those type of that's why those type of answers don't really edify me. Is because well, if we whoever we are have always been here everywhere, which makes sense. You're on a planet with humans. Humans have been here for a very long time. The theory is that we're the root of a bigger tree of family, so there's less humans and. Then there was more and then they spread out. So thus, you're all still the same humans, right? You're the same group. But it never explains that sentiment that 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 as a matter of fact, we always been here. We always been everywhere. That doesn't begin to explain, though, why we are here now. That doesn't begin to explain why the us here in America are interfacing with something that wasn't also here. It, it doesn't explain that. It doesn't explain in in the event we were always here and now we're interfacing with things that weren't. Why are we not more defensive? Why are we not more adversarial of overcoming that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like something changed unexplained and our reaction to it unexplained. But suffice it to say, at the end of the day, you're always here. Ashe, ashe. They don't do nothing for me, Chief. Because. Cool. Whatever. Who are these other people then? When did they show up? Why did they show up? Why are we dealing with it? If if that's how we giving it up, is what I'm saying. And it don't sound like no one's giving it up like that. So it's like. It's what I'm saying is that's a canned response in my brain. And my little repeat until if then statement, that's a canned response. That's a generic answer that then robs you from thinking about it, an order of thought further. It stops all of the things you're going to discover if you question that. Like we're always here, so it don't matter. And there's no reason to get into the Sundry Act. There's no reason to get into the Buck Act, the Negro Act, um, Reconstruction Period, Tartaria, Mudflood. There's, no, there's a whole closet of important information, context, and awareness that you close shut forever if you just blindly accept it. We're always here, whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like for me, like for how like I've bundled my gnosis, like to cut that branch off is critical, dog. Like 
you want to skip over the fact that niggas been Indians and niggas who've been Indians been in America and they were mound builders. How do you skip past going on that? Like, if especially if we're going to confess, like, you know, all this blackity black pan African Egypt Kemet shit, right? Like, just on the strength of, like, that's where most of the magic and gnosis comes from the Book of the Dead, the Book of, you know, by day, by night, whatever the fuck, all that cool shit, right? All that trill ass shit we can get out of Abyssinia, all that trill ass shit we get out of Ethiopia, all that trill shit we can get out of East Africa, whatever. And I know we got some ill ass shit in West Africa too. Don't even play. I seen them niggas levitate. Stop playing with me. With all that being said, most of the narrative in our recent cosmic collective consciousness community has been pivoting off of Afrocentric themes and thoughts because it doesn't matter where we're from. Yet, you know, we, we, we're under Africa's teeth to nurse us back into our spiritual, you know, right standing, really. It, to, to that effect, you know, I celebrate and I'm thankful for Africa, like, because Africa. Um, although she may not be aware that she's been this catalyst for us in America, but Africa mirrored us back to us. Like being exposed to the actual Africans in recent history and their cultures and their differences and their spiritual, their witchcraft, their fight with colonialization, like being able to see that in a different context with a different group of people. Um, a lot of that is what led me to think like, well, if the Africans pass down certain science and math orally pause, then one must assume that that exists here as well. And now I need to look for what that's called and who they are and where they are. And absolutely, if you seek for it, you'll find them. Um, we do have that here. The Salish and the, and the Dogon tribes of Africa and the Salish uh, tribes of the Pacific Northwest, they indeed have done that. In the Salish tribes of the Pacific Northwest, which is like your Oregon, Seattle, that region, they have sky people. And that's important to note that the west side of America and the west side of Africa have the same story. And so, so, so just hold that, right? Because they put the extra butter on Africa, we created a certain symbol or framework based on that, right? We learned how to read hieroglyphs that way. But now, boom, you look into what your grandma said. When grandma said we was Cherokee and you go down that rabbit hole and you get into the Grand Canyon and you get into Ohio and you get into Memphis, Tennessee, and you get into Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, and then you go skirt, skirt. Wait a minute. They found a million mummies in Mexico. Yeah, that's that's kind of inconvenient. That's a, That's an inconvenient, pesky fact. There's a million mummies in Mexico that they dug up in the late 1800s. You hear what I said? A million. I didn't say a couple. I didn't say a family. I didn't say Offset and her babies. I said a million people were mummified in Mexico under the mound builder civilizations, the Toltec kingdoms, and the shared kingdoms and modifications by Olmecs and Mayans. Like, we've been on that. And... So then, boom, you jump into panic this world, right? I'm talking to a special segment of our spiritual community now. So one of the keys that panic gave us is that these names of these gods and these sigils are overused. When they're overused because they reach peak awareness, then they kind of fizzle out until you recharge them again. Same thing you do with your crystals in the water or the salt or the sunlight or moonlight. It's the same thing, these powers or these prayers, if you will. This is just prayers. That these sources of prayers, they 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 burn out because because they're 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 mental constructs by people who are long gone, and they charge them up really well, and we borrow the charge, and then we kind of forget why we're charging it, and then it poofs, it goes away out of existence. But because the American stuff has been quiet for my whole life, plus recent. I guess post civil war, so at least a century, like a lot of the language we used to speak in the gods, or you know, uh, what's one of them? Her name is uh, it was with a K, uh, Oki, O K E E, like the wind, the wind goddess Oki, 
that's Native, Native American, like once you start speaking to those again or calling out to them, because, you know, you're just creating frequencies in their name. So now you're like, just like a certain series of thoughts creates the symbol that's stamped to your brain as a memory. The words that you utter also speak into the water of your life. So there's certain words we haven't said. There's certain frequencies we haven't combined because they took away our language, because they took away these titles. Now that we're looking into it, and even if they're just coming across your brain, hello, water, now Oki is in the waters of my mind. Now this, or Maya God M, he's in my mind. And, and you could just imagine what that was like for the people we're connected to right here and how much tremendous power is in that. And us starting to recover, if you will, to restore from a lost, you know, checkpoint. A lot of our brothers in America who are fighting for their so-called Indian heritage um, are really missing this right now. And maybe, you know, everything in due time. But brothers, your real inheritance has nothing to do with the land. The real inheritance or reclamation that we're getting out of this whole arduous process is our spiritual birthright. America was a super spiritual civilization. There's, there, there is no sense of materialism here. Y'all understand that, right? There was no sense of like the opulence that they were chasing, they couldn't find. You know that, right? Like El Dorado, these imaginary kingdoms of gold. The Spanish and Portuguese alleged have crashed these boards under Unum Sanctum and Dumda Versus in exchange for these Shangri-La underground golden cities. Mind you, the European Negro came over here on the materialism. The American Mur people were past that. As a matter of fact, where we were a few developmental clicks beyond that by hook or by crook for whatever reason, maybe because they looked at us like we took the shit for granted because, you know, they came out of the contrast of cold, famine, shit on the streets, you know, it was real tense on that rock of theirs. But you know what I'm saying? That's why you can't expect someone who don't know you, who didn't go through that to understand, you know, your, your, your angle. And they didn't understand ours either. Apparently that's how we ended up on the shit end of the, the aggression stick too. But in recovering that damage, overcoming that trauma, the, the biggest thing that you're going to find that we're getting back and the reason why it kind of flatlines religion and white Jesus and stuff for us is that that's a prerequisite to reformatting your disc. Like the white Jesus program is in the way of it because it takes away your belief in your, your connections to your current environment. You know what I'm saying? We're not echoing or bellowing to the spirits or the winds of some African desert or forest. No. Like these trees here remember the story here. These waters here have the DNA stored in it here. You're tapping into that. If, 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 if you're allowed to, if you allow yourself to, you know, pick up on that vibration, it's here. It's in the environment. So, you know, you're reconnecting to some old stuff. And us just keep saying it over and over. No, we're Indians. No, we're the Indians. Like, you know how like you're saying we're not the Moors, but as a matter of fact, we are the Indians. So you can't take that away from us. You, you keep out Andalusia and I'll raise you ancient Tamari. You can take Africa from us, from our narrative, from our, what are they, our clout bag. Take it. Take it. Take it. Because the Egyptian gods are the American birds. And the American birds are my ancestors' food. The Egyptian African gods are American animals. The American animals are my ancestors' food. That's a bigger part of the divide too. Why I stand on business with that. Like, me proclaiming life or my my bloodline starts there is to abandon the estate here and we're now we're talking spiritual estate because has nothing to do with your bonville and your nice little roman column plantation house 
nigga, what? <laughs> we build castles in the sky, like a uh, 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 ranch with some horses. Nigga, this ain't HGTV. I make music. What the fuck that do for me? So, yeah, I didn't want to continue to abandon our spiritual estate. And you only get access to it by proclaiming that. And the, the Moorish American society has done a great deal in teaching that spiritual principle when it came to proclaiming your nationality. Um, and how that uh, energetically corrects a lot of trauma, thoughts, and fears that you've developed through your indoctrination through school and media. That's very important, too, if that's the game you're playing. I'm not playing that game. I'm not trying to get away with driving without a license. I don't. <laughs> we have a lot of problems, and those ain't the ones that matter right now to me. But spiritually wise, The beauty of this journey is that the spiritual concepts that people refuse to talk about or refuse to acknowledge or just play to the side for science to figure out now that as you come into it, you no longer can refer to their authority because your whole life they told you they don't know. That's what makes this real. You can't get it from nobody else. You you. You necessarily have to walk on faith and not by sight. You necessarily have to go into the darkness to find light. You have to. That I, I can't. I couldn't get this. I, no one answers my questions ever. Like you know what I'm saying. Like as a kid growing up and wondering. So I had to do it that way. You know what I'm saying. And and and, and that majesty of manifestation. That's the most beautiful proof that I needed that there's something else with me. I would have missed all of that if it just didn't matter where we're from. By knowing more accurately where I'm from, I can more accurately overstand how much I've overcame. Like how powerful the work was, how powerful the spell was, how, how deep in the trenches of indoctrination we were under. Like I didn't just overcome being lost at sea because I was kidnapped from Africa. I overcame that program. I overcame that guilt and all that dumbass energy in that sigil. I overcame the diaspora wars. I overcame the pride and challenges of what I could have been if I just stayed in Africa. Like all that, you know, kumbaya, my Lord, stuff it takes you to. We had to overcome that too while still being black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? While still being, while still being black. Like don't, don't miss the dancing Negro here. Like, we got all the homework assignments for niggas, plus the the American, you know, extra credit of stomping you out even a little bit further than that. What else could it have been if it's not something else? Little old me? Mm-mm. Impossible, amigo. Words of Aquarius. Shout out to Billy Hamilton. Shout out to Ultra Instinct. Shout out to Baby's Kids. With wisdom, you may have to answer, but without understanding, you can't really reach it. Knowledge plus wisdom is equal to understanding. Shout out to Rooney. Never any notifications when you go live. Shit. Thank you, Rooney, for coming through anyway. But on that notification bell, go ahead and unclick it and re-click it because the algorithmic uh, wizards at Alphabet Group be player hating on their own creators and don't even make sense. Like, you think they, like, look out for a nigga just because of how long I've been creating videos consistently. Like, just on the strength of tenure, like. Let me let me at least get 10% of my subscribers notified. You know what I'm saying? I ain't asking for the whole kit and caboodle. But you think they would give us a little bit more pressure on that algorithm. Baby's kid talking about the Kabbalah. He said the left-hand path nor the right-hand path take you all the way to the top of the tree. You eventually have to get to that middle pillar. Is that the Jedi pillar? Is that the Jet pillar? Let me know. Let me know.
Shout out to De- Deontay DJ C. I see you, brother. Seven Circles says, I'll be reaching out soon. I have some important info to share. I appreciate you, my brother, Seven Circles. Y'all go head over to Seven Circles channel to subscribe to him. He does a lot of interviews with people on these topics. He's a good brother out there. And um, where are you at, Seven Circles? You're in Oakland? You're in, you're in the Bay Area, I think? Shout out to, shout to brother Seven Circles for coming through. Be Mavericks in the building. That's why I be mad when big my big homies know about being a state citizen and they got the special plates and licenses with the stars, but then they tell me I can't get in. Yeah. And they may not even question why. They just go with the flow. You know, it's, it's just benefits packages to a lot of niggas. It's really, it's, it's, yeah, you're talking about not passing pearls to swine, but let's be honest, a lot of the niggas with the pearls are the swine. This is the only reason why it leaks out the niggas like me to deduce through the fucking ether. Because I'm in proximity to them. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I'm spiritually eavesdropping a lot of the times, if we honest. Shout out to Baby's kids. He said he studied under the noble, the nation, Farrakhan acknowledged it. But previously, all credit goes to um, Wallace. Yeah, it got messy. I did see uh, Elijah Muhammad's brother, John. Was it John Muhammad, I think? He did a, um, it's on YouTube. I think you turn, you type in Elijah Muhammad's brother plus Fez, and he gives you the history of the Fez because you know the Nation of Islam had that type of Kufic type of um, cap with the crescent moon and stuff around it. But he was saying when Elijah and them first started, they were wearing red fezes, and I was like, yeah, that's Noble Jew Ali, that's Moorish Temple Science of America. This is the Nation of Islam of Moors. It's the Nawubian Nation of Moors, but our people in these organizations may see that or hear that incidentally, but they don't highlight the Moors, like in the history in them and what happened to them, you know, slave trade be damned. Like, where's the Moors? Like they just stopped being the Moors? Like kind of weird, no. <laughs> you know, you're like, no, they're the Moroccans now. Like, no, they're not. I got all the paintings. I have not all the paintings, but I have so many paintings of the Moors. And they don't look like the Moroccans at all. I've seen French Montana. He looked like he could have a black grandmother. That's about it. I want to know who her great daddy is. I want to know who her great granddaddy is. Don't play with me. And then tell me what happened to the rest of them. The fact that there ain't no movie or story about it is what's perplexing. And then once they tell me some stupid ass slavery story, then I'll be like, well, then why does America have the Titles of Nobility Act in a treaty with Algiers? If all things are considered, why are these still longstanding treaties that are active if the whole Moorish unit turned into slaves? So you're telling me that there's longstanding treaties with slaves? Okay, so now the value and meaning of slave doesn't mean nothing. It's just a cool little title word. But what happened to these niggas you had treaties with? Ain't nobody touching that. I mean, I'm talking about nobody. I'm talking about nobody touching that. This Moorish American temple science people ain't touching that. Where is this divine supreme council at? Where's the rest of Principal's people at? Where did Sidi Muhammad's uh, surviving family go? He had brothers. So they skipping around this story and I don't like it. Jay Burke says, when you're talking about names, I think it's called a suedo name. You got it. Yeah, Jay Burke, exactly. People with different suedo names. Like the Hakata Khan and Octai Khan, same, same. Or uh, like King George the Third, George Washington, and um, that other dude, they're kind of like, or be- better example, a lot of people suspect that Benjamin Banneker Bay being half American, half European. We talk about black on both sides. Him being half and half then gave him access, of course, to the London Bridge scenario or the Big Ben Tower. He, he created that, right? Because he was able to go to Europe and under his degrees or his pull through his family and bloodline, the, the, you know, the people who ruled Europe or London, you know, still King George III, by the way, in case you missed it, let this nigga design a big ass clock there, but he's supposed to be on the side of the niggas fighting 
You know what I'm talking about? Ben, big Benjamin Banneker is pointing to the map for George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, and they're going to war to overthrow some team crumpets from King George III, but the nigga that helped him, Mr. Banneker, was able to go to London and design a clock for these niggas. So if it was racism, slavery, black versus white type of energy around during that time, then why would King George III or whoever let the nigga that overthrew his control of those northern 13 colonies gallivant around Benjamin Franklin too, gallivanting around France and Europe. Y'all just fucked up my plug on my tee. You just fucked up my tax, so you ain't even got enough for the re-up. Um, you about to spaz out with the barbarians, which is going to put pressure on our ports because that we are who you trade with. And then you want to try to do your own independent demonstration, but we want to send these niggas back over here, Indians included, to design some shit downtown London. Like, come on. Come on, come on. In what universe, niggas? So maybe there's a different story happening. But the suede on them thing is, so Benjamin Banneker, who did all of that, who designed DC, Chocolate City, who did Big Ben and some other shit too. They probably don't even give him credit for in South America, by the way. Because if you look at Brazil, it's Washington, D.C. looks just like ours. It's bigger, though. Pause. So you got that. And then you have Benjamin Franklin, who they say the, 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 the genius of Benjamin Banneker was actually projected to Benjamin Franklin, because white people taking credit type beats, like uh, Einstein taking credits for his wife's patent office job type beat. And then on top of that, you have Prince Hall of Prince Hall Masonry, who's supposed to be a slate on them for Benjamin Banneker, Benjamin Franklin, too. So you get the whole thing like Prince Hall needed his own lodge because the niggas in Boston was trying to play in his face after the war. And it was like, well, the big war that we all know about, Benjamin Banneker was here for the American Revolution. He was He's pivotal. He has a letter to Thomas Jefferson to show you how pivotal he is in a book that the University of Ohio is currently translating that we got a copy of in the Discord if you want to read it. We know for a fizzy, like for facts, for facts, like, that nigga was a well-rounded Negro and um very smart and in the brotherhood and all that stuff. So if this Masonic ass nigga Benjamin Banneker was on the checkerboard with Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, then the Prince Hall story be damned. Because you're not getting a bigger blacker Mason than Benjamin Banneker in America during the American Revolution. And at the very least, Benjamin Banneker and Ben and uh, Prince Hall should be the, be in the same goddamn club. They should be in pictures together because they're on the same degrees. They got to go to the same lodge. They got to have the same brothers swear the men. So you can't play the game like they wouldn't know each other. I thought they were slaves just two days ago. Miss me with the fuck shit for real, right? Even when you look them up, even when you look them up, they're going to tell you who they say, right off Rippy. You ain't even got to think about it. Come on now. Stop fucking playing with me. It's right there in his goddamn hand. So if he indeed is Prince Hall and he had to do his whole demonstration after helping these, uh, what do they call them, anglicized Caucasians or anglicized Europeans, they still turned on this nigga, this half and half, tragic mulatto. You know what I'm talking about? So, no, nah, man. Nah. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. At the same damn time, at the same damn time. Oh, Baltimore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's from Baltimore. No wonder. No wonder. He's depicted in 1943 on the recorder of Deeds Building in D.C. Mm -hmm. Mr. Square and Compass himself. You see it. I see you, little Adams. I see what you're trying to say. Don't mess with me. Don't, 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 don't. So, yeah, he 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 plugged in, but he don't know Prince Hall. All right, maybe he's him. Shout out to DJ Georgie Porgy, TSCG Music. I see you, Tyrone Sellers. I see you, Ultra Instinct. What's good? Zenith says those words on Edamon Online are indeed connected. Palm, pound, and ponder. I believe you. I believe you. That that sounded like money. That sounded like money. That sounded like nothing but net. Jonathan says PCMG and Tribe Squad. 
baby kisses. That explains a lot right there. Yes, sir. And left being Luciferian as an example of body panic, etc. Prince Premier Holmes says, I'm looking for them while they watch us. Yes. And Tony McKinney's in the building. AM the legend. I see you. And then we have um the Zenith says, I'm gonna chill out on the spam, but MG, wait till you look up the connection between web, weave, and wave. Janus is related to portals, streams, channels, computers, realm, binary code, and duality. You're not spamming. You're excited. You have some connections. And I respect your and I respect your um your 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 enthusiasm about these things. So I'll go ahead and look that up real quick. Mm -hmm. So you said what? Now, woven fabric, work tapestry, proto-Germanic, P-I-E, fabric. It became spider's web in the 12th century or 1200s. Applied to the membranes between the toes of ducks and other aquatic birds in the 1570s, so after colonialization. The internet since is from 92, shout out to Al Gore. World Wide Web 1990, web browser, web page 1990. Okay. So that's web. Tapestry. Then you said weave, which is how you, you, you weave a web. English. Oh, it's a word. Yeah. Exactly, it's a verb. Interlacing yarn patterns, figuratively to devise, to contrive, to arrange, to arrange the pattern. Proto-Germanic and PIE as well. Old High German, shout to the Cubans. To move quickly as well. Sanskrita, there we go. He laces it together, he weaves it together. He combines two materials together to combine into a whole. Okay, so it's like addition. Mathematically, it's like addition. So we got web which is the description of what it is, weave, how you put it together. And then the last one you said was weave. Wave, verb, Old English, high German, Middle High German, PIE, 1510s. So all around colonization still, transitive verb. All right, so it's to wave or to fluctuate, wavering, restless, unstable, wob. Uh-huh, I see, web. To hover about, to undulate, to move to and fro, to weave, there we go. To and fro because the action of waving, to weave something, you are going, you're oscillating through the materials, you're oscillating through the pattern. So that's the wave, this is the wave, as you're weaving a web. So uh, the reason why these are related is because they're speaking to the uh, hermetic principles. How did he do that? Hold on. I got it, but I don't. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I got it, but I don't. I got it, but I don't. Give me a background color. Oh, you, 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 not nice words. All right, no, come on. Brother said, weave web. He done hit me with the Charlotte's web. Hold on. Whoa, my mouse is like, I don't like that material, sir. Ah, oh, man, wrong order. But if I had a uh, what is stack 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 rank it, if I had a stack rank it, uh, first you have the wave, which is the feeling. So the feeling is the initial impulse, the first drop into the palm, create the first wave, which is the thought, but from your emotions. Like you hit the emotions hit you, then you assign. A gnostic or a gnosis value to it. So I felt something. What does that mean? How did that make me feel? Then you start to think, animate in your mind, start to weave a pattern together or logic or we'll call it thought for sure, but the thought in terms of the pattern recognition of the feelings of what the feelings are taking you. So you hit the, the wave hits you, 
But then you start to weave the feelings into thoughts. And then, of course, we'll just cross this out because I'm going to get OCD. You get three, <laughs> which is going to have the, the, the effect or the tangible outcome of this process. So the web is this manifested in a physical reality. So it's like how, what, or not even that, start backwards. Like this is the what, the web is the what. Weaving is how, and the wave is why, why this all happens. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. You're going all the way from sound harmonics to light to particle physics. Um, so that means all physical reality is proof of is proof of an invisible reality. There's an invisible system, law, hierarchy at work first, primary primary causes this initial feeling or thought, or, you know, this initial impulse that animates time, one frame per second. That's what starts it. And then you assign values through thoughts. And as you hold on to that light or guide it, it becomes particles. And that's that whole uh, split electron shit or that catch it right here happens on this dimension. But up here on this dimension is what you're cooking, like, this feeling thought dimension is what all the programming is for. Why they're so heavy handed in sigils and suggestion and narrative is because those words or those frequencies of the words. So it's not necessarily, oh, you a bitch ass nigga. The meaning of those words, if you're a foreign person, they, they don't do nothing for you because you don't know what any of those words mean. But if you grew up with the context of what those words mean and the feeling you're supposed to get when you hear them, that's how it produces your response in your reality. So our words, our spells, is speaking to the shapes that those words create in the water of your mind, which affects how you feel or how you respond to it and how you push it back or how you accept it, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just that process. We're, we're always throwing frequencies back and forth when we're talking. It's not really the words, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the, it's the shape. The shape is consistent. It's danger. It's danger afoot. Big black man got upset. He's calling names now. We're way past at how many. He's going to punch me. You know, it's a feeling you get. It's, that's, that's the start, that impulse. So when we talk about Akasha, or we talk about you know, flowing from the survival scrolls as I you those I use those as my metaphors that I've picked up. I've heard other brothers kind of use them in a similar way. I adopted them. But that's because it gets it's uh what Tariq Nasheed says when he's giving, you know, highlighting the ancestors, it's what Bruce Lee does when he's giving you uh Confucius say, uh and, and and it's and it's touching on what the Bible says in Jeremiah and Daniel and those promises or what Jesus says, or when two and more come together, like it's it's highlighting that rhythm. It's highlighting that that what does they call that that maxim of truth, no matter what and who. The maxim is that, like it stands true no matter what. We're like water. So, the waters of your mind is really just your feelings. You don't really have these type of feelings unless you have a body. So you'll understand very quickly that your feelings or your ego. Is, is, is indefinitely indebted to your feeling state. Or I think uh, more scientifically, we're going to call it what your parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and if you want to go deeper and nerd out on that further, you will look into your vagus nervous system or your vagus cord that makes you a little bit different than the reptiles. It's your vagus nervous system, right? So that's, that's kind of like the, the pulse generator. Now, we don't know where the pulses start, though. So like when the pulse goes out to you and you're sympathetic enough to pick up on it and then process, feel, think, act on, you like to think those feelings come from you. So then you take ownership of both the feeling and the thoughts 
And sometimes some fucked up feelings get sent to you that cause you to have some fucked up thoughts, which can then influence some fucked up behaviors. But because you're not mindful of the law, you know, ignorance of the law is no excuse or whatever the fuck. Because you're ignorant of the workflow or you're ignorant of the cycles, you're not thinking like, yo, I feel mad something or I feel insecure. I feel like on wires or I feel something. And now I'm thinking a certain way. And now because I'm thinking this way, I produce that in my reality in a, like I said earlier in the stream, in a ridiculous, silly type of way. Like, I'm only here because you sent that energy towards me. I only made those feelings and thoughts and connections because you sent this work towards me. And, and, and then when you start code switching to that language, most of you probably understand what I'm saying. Like, most of the people doing spell work are trying to nudge you, or they're trying to affect your feelings. That's why they work with the moon. <laughs> they're trying to affect the waters, right? Come on now. It's right there in front of you. I even got a nice little, you know, chart for you. It's all connected. That's why language is so powerful, because like your brother pointed out, the Edamon is, is is beckoning back to a more simpler time when the alchemy and the language was more concise. We integrated all these different people with the different perspectives and different words and made a bigger pool of frequencies. But when you get to the simplified, you know, Yahweh Vahe, like when you get to the, you know, the four syllables, you know what I'm saying? That's where all these other words come from without the vowels anyway, right? So it's it's not because their definitions are similar. It's because the frequencies are similar. Then it's the definitions because it's the wave, then the weave, then the web. You know what I'm talking about? You can do this. You can do this with everything because that's universal law at work. That's, that's the hermetic. That's hermeticism. That's what it is. It's being able to connect all those things at all times, no matter what the subject is. And that's how you make yourself an adept. I'm looking for them while they watch us. Shout to Zenith. Premier Home says, like they said, like they said, hit daddy out another unit in charge while claiming to die for a woman he can have sex with. It was just part of the get control of both sides at the same time, causing the problems. Now you're talking about World War II. Seven Circles says, yep, be maverick, like gang members who go by two names. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the gang banger Carlton, but we call him Alfonso Ribeiro for short. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Nas and Belly. Whatever. All right. So, Seven Circles. Zenith says, you have to check the common roots. I started saving all the roots. Twisting and turning. Janice is the god of curves. So, think of signs and oscilloscopes. And then think of the weaving pattern of this shape. This is like, I think, like, this might be the best way to, you know, store it in a sigil that you use in science. That shape right there is like the spiral of our life. Like we think we're going in circles, but we're really like going up a spiral staircase cosmically or spiritually. But when you see the math on it, there we go. When you see like these type of diagrams of the golden ratio, you can even use this as a template to design like logos and photography. Like a lot of the beautiful photos and drawings is less about the drawing and more about it following the outline of the golden ratio where certain objects are, right? Like the artists be keeping their little Illuminati four chord secrets. This is it. So this is the, these are the four chords for artists, <laughs> but it's all the same, you know, golden ratio. So like the golden ratio, you see, you know, you start with an idea, it doubles itself and then it adds its previous idea and it doubles itself and it adds on and it. It all adds up. That's what this circle stuff is like, or, uh, Time is like, this is what like ideas are like. Or if you listen like Kurzweil, Kurzweil was talking to Joe Rogan and a few other people more recently. If you don't know about Kurzweil, he's like one of those futurist thinkers. He like like Nick Bostrom's uncle type energy. You know what I'm saying? You know, he pontificated about the progress of technology. We know him in the producer community because he made keyboards. There's some good ones too. They're like, you know, sound font level motifs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wanted one, you know, I was like, I can't wait to hit the streets with the Kurzweil uh, joints. 
You know what I'm talking about? Y'all wasn't outside for real. I don't, I don't know nary a nigga in the ATL that had one of these, but we should have. Y'all love those brass horns and stuff. He got them. Kurzweil, that's his namesake, right? So he's a futurist, sound, uh, architecture type dude, you know, math, a math dude. And um, he was just saying how, like, by 2029, we will have AGI. And it's because, and it's going to shock us so because we're not familiar with the effects of exponential progress. He said, we're so used to progress being, you know, right here in the minutia, like one plus one gives us two, then two plus two gives us four. Like we're very used to that kind of progress. Like, oh, we got the big chips, then we got the small chips, then we got the GPU chips. And, you know, we're waiting for PlayStation 6, basically. But what Kurzweil is saying now is that instead of going from PS5 to PS6, our next jump by 29 is going to be like going from PS5 to PS25. That's exponential progress in technology. And we're and, and we're on the cusp of it. So it's almost imperative that our stupid asses survive through April 8th and presidents and shit. Just so that we can see what that, I'm trying to see what that feel like or whatever, you know, Day Day was talking about. I'm trying to see what I'm trying to see what 2029 feel like if we're eligible for exponential leap in technology, which we're not, you know, we can't fathom yet because we don't know what five to 25. We don't know what that is. We still think it's five plus one, six. Nah, this next jump is about to be PlayStation 5 to PlayStation 25. And you already see glimpses of that with Sora, right? Like with the fact that Sora AI can do Unreal Engine level training, because that's why it looks like Unreal Engine. They trained it on random assets from Unreal 2. So it has that Unreal Engine look to it because that's, you know, that's how they hack the training data and context models. But um, but once it masters video game level graphics, it don't really matter if it gets better than that. But mind you, it's going to multiply from that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to go from Grand Theft Auto 5 to whatever the fuck our brains don't even we haven't seen this happen before that jump and that's what Kurt, that's what Ray Kurzweil is talking about right now he's like they didn't believe me in 1999 that I told them it only take 30 years and we're right on track with my prediction so just for the culture man if I get lit again I'm gonna get one of his keyboards just you know shout, you know, take out his you know show love to his his, his, his descendants <laughs> But you know, yeah, that's how it's going to be, though. That's how all this is, I think. I think we're going to have a Moore's Law slash golden ratio exponential jump in our awareness of everything. We're about to hit that exponential square where these little increments of progress leap to boxes this big to a box this big. And you notice that that leap from here, from this right piece to the left piece, is that all of that contains your starting point by hundreds. You get what I'm saying? That's how drastically different it's going to be. So have fun, niggas. Don't die. Jozik J- 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 G says he calls it the web of ices. Moorish Prince C7 says, interlace, interweave, and indivisible reality, just like tell live vision. Satan appears as an angel of light, an angle of light, a wave, a frequency of light, and on and on and on. That's deep. But you're absolutely correct. I have seen the demonstration broken down that the light that they're seeking from Lucifer is literally an angel of light, Lucifer, the light bearer. And then you can transpose that to planetary phenomenon, and you can transpose that again to atomic phenomenon. And then when you get real classy and the nerds stop icing out all of you fucking um, hypochondriac and schizos, then you'll just realize these are algorithms. Like the astrology of your birth chart is basically the algorithm for your personality. These are algorithms. (laughs) You know, when uh, the brother, uh, what is his name, John Gates? No. Yeah. Billy Hamilton said he went to school with him, right? The physics dude, the mathematician dude that was on the theory of everything with Neil deGrasse. Was it Smith? Was it Smith or Gates? You know, the, the gray haired brother, he studies African Mandikas and he develops code from them. 
I have his name convoluted with Frederick T. Gates on the Board of Education for some reason, but I'm pretty sure it's like Gates Senior Brown University got now. Shit. Yeah, Sylvester James Gates. Okay, a halfway there, goddamn. This brother right here, boy. Theoretical physics. Him. You see him on YouTube. You can find his, I don't know what's going on with his matted afro. If this is not a black European, I don't know what it is. Because, you know, goddamn well, his mama, his wife, his auntie, everybody would have fried his ass up at Thanksgiving if he walked out with his hair matted like that to any nigga in any hood nigga section with any 10 mile radius of a Martin Luther King Boulevard. You know they would have straightened his goofy ass out. They don't care how much money he got or what fucking math equation he got. That's how I know we ain't all the same. But with that being said, and the beauty of our differences, when it comes to um, making it clear that the patterns he finds in nature are algorithms, thus the African brothers encoded some of these stones with algorithms, thus you'll see some of these cities that look like circuit boards because they're algorithms. And you'll notice like a lot of the stonemasons or the mound builders deal with algorithms. They understand that stonemasonry led to actual Freemasonry and then video games like Assassin's Creed, the Masons come up with the algorithms and you, you start to see Al Gore algorithm. Like you'll start to see all these Masons are part of the algorithms. Like that's their thing. They're reverse engineering pre-flood civilization chips, patterns, designs. Like it's not a spooky, invisible, heavenly type thing they're dealing with. No, these are niggas who have made the science of a previous civilization romantic and dogmatized in an attempt to use humans as a storage medium, meaning if any reset happened again, hashtag Babel, a lot of us zealous religious dogmatic people will have enough of the keys of the flow of the story to wake up the engineer's mind to recall the science again. You know, it's 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 science stored in lore. We know the lore. We beef and argue and blow up people, I guess, over the lore, over the dogma, over the zealot of who's right. But really, we were just used as miniature floppy disk paws to, to, to keep the codes or to keep the symbols and to keep the language at a u unanimous. And so, so that's why you have the Christianized, colonized Africans who can embed their black magic into it. That's why you have the Dominicans or your grandma in Puerto Rico who can embed the saints along with Legba and, and Chango and Oya. And, and that's why, because you, you know at the end of the day, whether it's 12 hours or 12 planets or 12 days or 12 months or 12 lunar cycles or 12 Orishas, like, you know, you're just storing algorithms, right? And these are algorithms of frequency that require you to invoke a certain wave of energy into them in order to get a feedback loop back. That's what he teaches. But he teaches it on the strength of numbers and polynomials and shit like that, some nerd shit. But these nerds are so important because they're turning spirit science into math. So, you know, you can't have one without the other. Like, so salute to this brother and brothers like him. I do, I do want him to do something with that hair though, at the end of the day. <laughs> Zenith, so my boy got that moon rock cut. Come on now. Why, why, why? He says, you've been teeing off lately. I'm just saying, I'm, you know, must be nice. <laughs> Jay Burks' dog looked like a straight cornball, and he got to be. That's some cornball-ass work, but it's important cornball work. Devante says, sound like a kundalini in your body. You say you think the Masons fuck with Janus, Sebi? I think the Masons fundamentally are Gnostic and they're into some type of sun worship for sure. Uh, but then Masons pivot off of the sun worship. They go from the sun, then they get to the mother, which is, you know, Venus worship. Oh uh, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier about uh, Ishmaelites how like Abraham had more than one baby for real that had a nation under him and how people were convolving the fact that we must be from West Africa. But the reason why the Russian icons are black is because we were there. 
and by we, I mean the Afroasiatics were there, the the Malay were there. The Negroid was probably definitely more along the Silk Road, but that wasn't the Negroid's demonstration. That was the Asiatic demonstration. So when you see these um, Russian African saints, they're not Africans. They're Moors. Moors are not African. Like in this, it, like if you had to tell the difference between historical the Moors and then historical Ethiopians or Abyssinians or Libyans or Saudi Arabians, like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm just saying it like that. I'm not saying like I'm not rating or ranking. I'm just saying the Moors of Russia, who the icons are after are not the same demonstration of sub-Saharan Africans. That's false. So by putting it together, I was like, oh, wow, like Putin's really about to tell you Africa was really in Russia. Like, that's not what he's saying. And I said that a month ago. What he's telling you is the Americans were here and shit ain't been the same since y'all left. Now, who were the they that was there? The 10 tribes, the 10 tribes, like, you know, woo, 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 10 tribes. The 10 tribes of Israel were there. That's why they're saints. (laughs) <laughs> that's why it's in that book, the Tanakh. That's why it's there. So you're not looking at Jesus and Mary. Why? Because the 10 tribes didn't have a Jesus. Remember, the Jews don't believe in Jesus. Newsflash, guys, the real Jews are the 10 tribes of Hebrew Israelites. They didn't believe in the Judean Benjamin shit. They split. They sold them out. Remember, that's the whole story, Joseph. So the 10 tribes went on. So who did the 10 tribes venerate in Asiatica? Where to Muhammad? That's why they don't want to tell you that story. Because the minute you realize you're a Tartarian for real, and that you're a descendant of Israelites for real, then you become Iran's ally. You get it? If you become BRICS ally, there is no more West. Y'all do understand that, right? This ain't about your fucking vote of confidence for red versus blue. The moment you recognize who you are, your comrades almost instantly manifest, apparently. There's no BRICS without us. We are BRICS. BRICS is targeting where we are. They're not targeting New Zealand. They're not targeting France. They're They're targeting where we're at currently. All of their disclosure is talking about us. And that's why everyone's missing it. Like, no, this ain't no before African slavery. There was some unknown Africans who dominated and created the Russia language and all that. Rosicrucian, Rose Cross, Comrade, Solomon, Prester John. Those are niggas, bro. And like it. I'm talking about niggas, niggas, like the type of niggas, you know, that are joan on you type niggas, like they're them type of niggas, like us, them niggas, that's who they were, what happened to them, we're here, that's the only difference, the 10 tribes came to America, by hook or by crook, enough of us came here, that doesn't mean all of us came here, just like all of us wasn't in Tartaria. So, yeah, we show up everywhere. But when we're in captivity, which is not the same thing as slavery, we are an upgrade to that civilization. Because all of the transcribing, all of the science, all of the high arts comes from our camps, comes from our priesthood. Why is that important when you understand how kingdoms are formed? And kingdoms had to have us involved because we're the ones that gave them the manuals to the technology they recovered from giants. That's the whole David and Goliath thing, bro. Cracked his third eye wide open with a slingshot, my nigga. Like, come on. Like, we're the ones interacting with giants in that context. It's like, oh, the Great Walls of China, walls are inward. Correct. So who are they keeping captive? And what got out? Because the Great Wall of China failed. And as the Great Wall of China failed, here we go. They say the Russians um, overcame the the Golden Horde. That's allegedly the end of Genghis chapter. Russia, whatever that means. Then you get into Gannibal, you get into Pushkin, you look at what Russians look like. You go to the King of Hawaii, you see exactly what Russians look like. They're black. They just weren't called Russians, because why? When was Russia founded, stupid? 
That's why that etymon and following the dates and the name changes are important. They're referring to ancient Russia, but it wasn't called ancient Russia, Tartans and Dubs. And you look into those terms, you look at Moors, Orientals, Orientales. You look into Morden, M-O-H-R-E-Ns. You look into that, then you see them. All the niggas are there in Silk Road. They're all there. The ones that are said not to exist because of a fucking silly ass word game that they're playing with black and blackness. Meanwhile, none of them niggas are white. So we have a bigger problem, Houston. If they're not us, I know they're not you. Where do you come from? So no matter how you approach this, wherever you approach it from, we got the same dilemma. So I know I'm past that. I'm past arguing with these niggas because I already said that. And then Vladimir Putin allegedly is showing you that I said, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is, I think it was different in our time period is that it's happening as I say it. Whereas some of the brothers who came across these very obvious things didn't get no momentum, didn't get no tick. It wasn't ready. It wasn't time yet. But obviously, this is a better time for transparency. And um, I just happen to be in the wave, surfing as best as possible of the, inevit- the inevitability of the truth of the matter. Because I've been praying. Y'all been praying. We've been creating these congregations by joining together and two or more come together on these topics. And we have these questions and I'll be on my nigga shit joking and talking shit. But. I find like that works. That 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 style works. This to be in this capacity to make changes in our reality works. I don't know how it just does. So here we are. Shout to Shogun. Shout to Jay Burke. Premier Home. CSCG. Mal J. Peace. Where Deontay is up there. Galaxies in our eyes. Yes, sir. Career is wheeling. Yes. I'm trying to think if I have any uh, final thoughts. <laughs> well, definitely, certainly, it's stream before the actual eighth hell. I might even stream on the goddamn Eclipse, no, my crazy ass. But I want to let them loose you too much into all of those different things. Because like I was saying earlier, the Eclipse is going to coincide with so much on the same day. So like uh, NASA rockets Eclipse. Let's see what these goofballs are on. USA Today. NASA is launching three sounding rockets into space during the solar eclipse. Here's why, allegedly. They want a sudden drop in sunlight that affects our atmosphere. They always want to figure out what's going on in our atmosphere. All right, so then when you figure out what's going on in our atmosphere, what are you going to do with that information? Can NASA ever tell me what they do with that information once they study it? Like, how, what are they building with that? Okay, so you got that. And then you got CERN on solar eclipse. Starting to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator during April solar eclipse. They're searching for invisible matter, black matter, um, in a plasma universe. So dark matter, technically, they say it doesn't exist if you change the model. I'm not a nerd enough to know. I don't know all the concepts that you nerds are rocking with when it comes to space and matters and dimensions. But I will say it sounds like if CERN is trying to get a peek into the so-called dark matter, and dark matter is supposed to be what's on the other side of light or, you know, your universe is here, but you're wondering what's on the other side of it. Like what's containing the universe or what's containing earth on the other side of that is dark matter. So dark matter, I guess, um, and I'm just extrapolating here is the unseen or the underworld or subconscious realm or the uh, upside down and stranger things. So the dark matter would then be your, they're trying to take a peek into either A, other dimensions, or B, Akasha, into the astral realm. They think that this event is an opening or vortex or overlapping circle, uh, you know, the Virgin Mary, uh, what is that Piscean fish thing called? The Ver- Vesica Pisces, there you go. That overlap. They think that that overlap is going to happen to allow them the opportunity to access that, to see through the veil. There we go. Use the same. It's the veil. They're veil hunting on a solar eclipse. So check this out, though. Like, like, game. 
everybody is veil hunting. NASA, who can't tell you they do spiritual stuff, although all of their Mars and moon missions are named after black science, black American deities and all of that. Look it up. Look up all the locations on Mars and the moon that NASA laid out. They're all Osirian, so don't get it twisted. That's why they're Masons. So you got them doing their Osirian ritual. Effects on atmosphere, a.k.a. the feelings. And then <laughs> there, there goes our weave web water <laughs> loop again. So the, so the Masons at NASA are going to see how it affects our feelings, right? Space Force. Then the niggas at CERN are going to see how it affects our thought realm. And who, who else is trying to figure out something about how niggas are going to react to this? Hold on. So you got NASA, you got CERN. There's one more. Some of the goofy shit on the, it don't even matter. Those, those are the feelings and thoughts are the ones that matter to me. So it's just curious that everyone's launching an initiative of discovery on the eclipse, right? So like we used to say on Clubhouse, to piggyback off of that, I would find it wise to use the same opportunity portal intention space to, to, to sow your seed of discovery too, like on the eclipse, on the eighth, eighth being the loop. And then that's supposed to be connected to Saturn and, you know, Saturn is Yahweh and Yahweh is all these things. Then I guess if you're a praying person or you're a person who's kind of a little more sensitive to these energies, then all of these signs are telling you that you have an opportunity to access something that's hidden from you or something that's stored for you or something that's on the other side of the veil that you've been interested in pulling into your physical reality. So I guess you could use it as a portal, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a manifestation amplifier. Cause that's what everybody else who gets paid to do it is doing, right? You know, if it's good enough for CERN to blow a billion dollars worth of electricity, if it's good enough for NASA to situate a rocket launch that costs millions of dollars, then I think a candle crystal and a note and a prayer to the big homie might be, you know, par for the fucking course, you know, on some common sense shit, but I don't know. And of course you have to deal with the actual effects of it. Like, you know, they're trying to scare you. Got kids skipping school because they don't know what's going to happen. They did that same shit on Y2K too, though. So, you know, how far you want to take that in your paranoia, you know, at your, your viewer's discretion of advice, I guess it wouldn't hurt you to have some extra food and water on standby that particular day. But, um, you know, any interruptions in communications, data, networks, and stuff like that, I think whatever you lose in that, you might gain spiritually anyway. So I would be aware, at least, and sensitive to your ear ringing, to different vibrations and sensations your body goes through. I know a lot of others have been DMing me about Kundalini symptoms. I've seen someone in the chat discussing the same. So a lot of a few brothers are going through that currently. I don't think I'm one of them, but you know I would make note and observation and observe and report those type of phenomenons in this grace period. Also, of course, because they tell you the moon breeds or um, it pulls, you know, contention out of us. Like the thorn in our side is really the moon. We're low key, high key for multiple reasons, but. The moon energy, right? Um, how that affects emotions because it affects water. You know, the tides of Earth is, you know, the emotions of humans. And alleged, this eclipse is a solar eclipse. So, you know, whatever the sun does, which is charges you, powers you, particles and forms you, you know, that's supposed to be shadowed by the moon, hashtag allegedly. So your feelings are going to get in the way of what you know, type of thing. So when that happens, you know, you live in a different dimension. You live in your feminine, I guess, you know, no, no, no shades of ladies. But if if the moon is clouding your sun or or if Venus, Isis, Lucifer is, you know, overshadowing uh, Jesus, if you will, or Zeus or Eshu, you know, these are all the symbols and all the algorithms represent if those energies are colliding. And they said the darkness is supposed to last for a sustained time, right? That's supposed to be the caveat of this particular eclipse is that darkness is supposed to not be so brief. And um, in that darkness, it's like anything, anytime, you know, any allegory of the cave or any moment of life where, you know, the lights turn off and the light. And the thing about it affecting our sun is that our sun is animating this bitch for real. It's powering us up. Um, so you, you think of it symbolically, like out of the normal cycle of a day the sun is going to be like suppressed or oppressed. And the fear that comes from that naturally as an animal 
is one thing. But if you tap into your spiritual side, then you see something else is happening, right? It's not, oh, the sun and the growth and the light and the warmth is being turned off. It's that there's a reason to look inward into the subconscious underworld space. Darkness during light. Yeah, I can see all of those having very profound effects on human behavior, attitudes, emotions, dreams, because that is a powerful energy, irregardless of which planetary body is actually responsible for this phenomenon. Not, nonetheless, our, our sun, our, our source of life is, a, is going to be occulted. So there should be necessarily a, cha a change. And the sun is responsible for the plants growing back. The sun is responsible for our vitamins. And, you know, so this is not a this is not a minor effect by any stretch of the imagination. But how that light manifests in your physical reality, back to the graph, right? Depending on how that wave ripples, that's what type of web you'll find yourself in. So a lot of people start talking about Saturn and this type of energy, like nervously or like, oh shit, I gotta learn another lesson. Mm -mm, nah, no, no, no. <laughs> nah, I'm not even gonna do that. Because you control the wave. You control how you respond. You control your feelings to that pulse. It's gonna do what it's programmed to do. You're gonna feel it. You then have to intercept that initial surge of energy, Schumann resonance, whatever the fuck. And then you have to alchemize and, and, and store it or, or project it into a feeling state that benefits your scenario, if at all possible. Mind you, when we say shit like this, that's not to say that like that's easy. But at least to be mindful enough to choose to feel the opportunity of it. OK, so it's a portal. So that means I have an opportunity to jump to a better season or a new year for me, right? It's like a new year. So it's like, I'm going to jump into the new year that serves me, or I'm going to think about the manifestations that would benefit me the most right now in my life instead of the problems, or I'm going to do whatever little ritual and symbolic thing to me, which is just me taking extra time out to acknowledge that there's something greater and bigger than me at work. And I want to ally myself with those transitions and changes so that I'm in accord with it and I'm not crashing against the wave. Feel me? Like, if you know a tidal wave is coming, but you like to surf, you know, you can play that differently than a person who's afraid of water. It'll be dangerous nonetheless, but surfboard, surfboard, you know what I'm talking about? You get your surfboard, it'd be different. So, surfboard season, that's it. Surf these feelings, surf these waves, surf, surf these changes, eh? Stay prayed up. Maul J, you're right. Ferg the third, I see you. Premier, Willie Cook. I am Malachi, salute. Salute to everybody. But it's your boy, MG Future again, with another three on. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate the likes. Share the comment, replay game, subscribe if you ain't, if you new around here. And may you guys all be well, be blessed. May you be able to, uh, you know, jump through this portal with me. Until next time, though. Hold on, hold on, be far out. I'm going to play this instrumental for y'all. Y'all going to get this work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to get this work on the way out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I made a joint. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I made a joint. Don't go nowhere. Hold on. Well, I made it right. Yeah, I don't let I don't play that real quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on.